Line. I'm Adam, that's Dr. Drew, phone number 1-800-LVE-191, Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. <laughs> Poo doggy. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Well, no guests tonight, just us. <sighs> Tomorrow night, Kelly Who's going to be in here. Yeah, she's... better get all your farting done tonight. She's... Oh! Kelly Who's hot, right? Mm-hmm. She's in uh, X-Men 2? Yep. All right. That's good. I remember... I remember liking her. Smart, remember? Smart. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and not uh, too self-impressed. No. You know. I like that. It leaves uh, more room for me to be self-impressed. Yeah. Well. All right. So, we're going to take some calls tonight, and I'm dedicating. I'm rededicating myself to the show. Really? Do you notice I got here early tonight, Drew? You were tw twice, to 100% above your usual. Uh, Usually here time. about a minute and a half before the you, show starts. You were three minutes. Three ahead. minutes. Maybe the four. Show. Maybe four. Well, I'm, I'm just probably pulling up the curb at yeah, four. Right. All right. I'm rededicating myself. Yeah, 100%. I'm perfect. focused. Yeah. I'm ready to rock. You ready to go, Drew? Let's go. Let's go, buddy. Gina? Uh-huh? You're 20. Yep. What's up? <laughs> I, uh, I need to ask him for some advice. Okay. Okay. I've been with my boyfriend, John, for about, I guess, about a year now. Hmm. And I've been with other guys before him, and... You know, as soon, don't, don't you, as soon as somebody mentions a name, I immediately go, huh? Why, yeah, why are you doing just, that? Why are they mentioning that? I, I think that's, that uh, guys do it because they're doing bogus calls, and girls do it because they're dumb. All right, go, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Well, my problem is that when we're together, I am un unable to orgasm while we're having sex or any kind of foreplay. Any particular reason? Um, the only thing I can think of is that when I, I guess I started masturbating on my own. I guess I was about five. When masturbating, I just masturbating on your own, a <laughs> little bit redundant. <laughs> A little bit, although we did look it up, Drew, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it did have a dual meaning. Yeah, you're right. It, uh, it means somebody somebody can masturbate you. Right, you're right. Which I'm still waiting on, by the way. I know. A, uh, so yeah, so Gina... You're going to wait, Buster. I just Not just from you, but just from everybody. Uh, mm -hmm. Gina, uh, 20, not having an orgasm. How long have you been with him? Well, I've been with him a year. Uh, I guess I started having sexual relationships with men about I was 15 when I first had sex and I would think I was 14 when I first started having oral sex and foreplay. Do you do you fake an orgasm for this guy? Well, yeah, he knows the situation that I've never been able to do it before with a man. He knows that. But he oh, with any man, not just him. Yeah, with any man. But, right. you, but you masturbate. I've basically, I've never had an actual vaginal orgasm. I've only had a clitoral orgasm. Okay. Yeah. With with him, everyone's indoctrinated into this uh, notion that there are these two different orgasms. Well, what about anal? Yeah. Anal, no. What about nasal? You ever have a nasal <laughs> orgasm? No, I haven't tried that one yet. Some women. A guy gave me one once. Many and, uh, women. I didn't stop coughing for like a week. <laughs> yeah. I'm just getting a visual. Yeah. Some women just do not have orgasm during intercourse. Not some, most. Okay. Can, okay. Can you most twenty-year-olds, for play? sure. Definitely most twenty-year-olds. Now, uh, of those women, very high majority will be able to have an orgasm during inter during oral sex. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's what she's calling foreplay. Or I don't know. Yeah, so, yeah. You're not I, you know, I, sh I, I showed up. I hit the ground running tonight. You're done. Renew and call one. Call one. I'm tired. I don't know what her thing is. She's, what her thing? She's been with this guy for a year. They're she's having ne sex. She's and concerned that she's never had an orgasm with a male. She's she having. She's having. No, she's having. Uh, clitoral orgasms during foreplay. Right? No, only for myself. I only when she does. Oh, no. he before. has never given you. No man has given you oral sex and given you an orgasm. Right. No man has. Ever All right. Done does he try that? Oh yeah. He thinks he does. I don't want him to know that. I mean, I feel like I'm a freak when I. Well, I why, do, why, you, why, why do you use his name then if you don't want him to know? I don't know. Gina calling about John <laughs> from Florida. <laughs> Okay, you're fine. You're 20. That's just you. Don't fake it for him. He's got to know. He's got to have the feedback. You know, yeah. the feedback has to be accurate. That's right. Or he can't adjust. That's it's, right. It's a feedback loop. The guy's trying to follow a feedback loop, really, right? Yeah, it's like it's like a car with fake gauges. Yeah. You can't say the oil pressure's right, that the water temperature's right, that the amps are right, that the gas is right. 
You can't say that if there's if you're out of everything. Right. It's not fair to the car or the driver. Yeah. Thank you. You don't know when to pull over and get some gas. That's right, buddy. Sean? Yeah. You're 17? Yep. What's up? Yeah, um, uh, it, when I, uh, masturbate or when I have an erection, um, some stuff comes up. It's not semen, and I don't know if it's like VD or anything. It doesn't burn. No, no, no. That's just, uh, that's just that's normal. You got a leaky gasket. That, that's pre cum. Yeah, you got a little leakage. That's, that, all. that's all full of sperm, and that's the stuff that gets people pregnant. You yeah. Know, that's why you have to use a condom if you're, uh, you yeah. know, needing to use a condom for contraception. You have to use it before you ejaculate because that stuff comes out of most guys. Yeah. Mm hmm. Well, it's like, uh, well, uh, I was with a girl. And uh, she stuck my hand, her hand down my pants, and she like freaked out. She was, she thought that I I came all over myself, and I was like, I didn't feel anything. I yeah. didn't even know it was down there. So she put her hand down there. I'm like, you know, what's up? Whatever. Yeah. All right. No, she's he, he, penis is drooling, mm. like a dog drools mm -hmm. when he hears a can opener. Yeah. The the dinner bell going. True. Do you? I, I know we've talked about this before, and then we don't have an answer to this. But do you believe? Okay, let me ask you this. Is there a correlation between guys that have this and guys that are sort of hyper excited? I don't know that. Who, who might have an or like what like let me ask yeah. you this. Let me or ask like you. Like a this. premature guy. Premature guy yeah. or a guy who for instance, those guys we talk about that don't much care for the BJ, need the intercourse. It it, it would it makes intuitive sense, right? It fits yeah. for me, but I don't know if it's true or not. We'll ask more questions. They're Let's sort of people. uh yeah, their uh, their their uh, balls are chomping so, at the bit. So the next three m premature minute guys we talk to will ask about their yeah di dick drool. Hey, yeah, yeah, dick drool was uh, my name. <laughs> that was my porn name. <laughs> dick drool. Hey, dick drool. <laughs> yeah, are do you have uh, premature ejaculation? Uh, yeah, I usually masturbate like uh, probably like three times a week on a normal basis. I've been doing this for like three years. You better translate for him, man. I don't think he understands the question. Oh. Premature ejaculation is when you're with a girl and you have an orgasm sooner than you would like to. Oh, no, 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 no. Not, no. not at all. No, I last a pretty good amount of time. Uh, I mean, I theory really shot. Happen. Theory shot. Do uh. you like, uh, now, you like uh, getting a BJ, yes? I never had one. All right. But in theory, all right. <laughs> he's never had one. He's got to be. Where's he called? Oh, he's from Missouri. Okay, I can see that. Blair. Yes. You're 18. Yes. What's up? Okay. Um, when I pee, it's cloudy. Mm-hmm. And it kind of hurts. So you got mm -hmm. a urine infection. Huh? You have a urine infection. I, I really don't think that's what it is because I've had it before. Mm hmm And I don't know. I'm kind of scared that my boyfriend might be cheating on me. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you think it's STD? I, I'm i really just not sure, so... Well, well you you think it's an STD because you think your boyfriend's cheating on you. Right. Okay. STDs don't create cloudy urine. They don't. Well, what about chlamydia, chlamydia or something? I remember you saying that once on the show. It creates painful urination and creates discharge, but not specifically... Cl cloudy urine means you have pus in your urine, and that's a urine infection, that's mm -hmm. by definition. Mm -hmm. Okay. And maybe you're not really seeing cloudy urine. Maybe it's a discharge that sort of being diluted by the urine or something, but, you know, worth getting checked out. Either way, you have to get it checked out. Okay. So, uh, it's, it's the simple, the urine is so easy to rule out. If your urine is clear, then they can go on and check out. All right. Well, why do you think your boyfriend's cheating on you? Um, because this came up all of a sudden out of nowhere, and I don't see him anymore. He doesn't call me, and I don't know. Well, is he your boyfriend? Yeah. What? Oh, yeah. How long was the last time you saw him? It's been, uh, Monday? 97. Monday? Yeah. Mon Monday. Monday. And no contact since? Um, I've seen him driving around with his friends, but that's it. Doesn't, yeah. doesn't sound like boyfriend you, behavior. You, no, I mean, <laughs> he's my boyfriend. We've been out for like five months. Yeah, yeah but... Well, you, hold on a second. She counts contact as seeing him driving around with his friends. Like, I saw Cameron Diaz on uh, a Charlie's Angels 2 commercial, so... You were going out. Right? Well, we haven't broken up. Yeah, I've yeah, seen yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. I've seen her. That, yeah. Is that if that is that what you're talking about? Yeah. I've seen pictures of Ben Franklin in the history books. Is no, I mean oh. he's my boyfriend. We haven't broken up. Like all right. But we were we were going out before. All right. Is this the way he's every day before? Yeah, but no. I, I know. I I I had that before thing with about 30 chicks. I know. They're all gone. 
So just because he's not talking to me, I should just take it that he's broken up with I me. would take that. Yeah, I would. Here's the thing. At, at 18, uh -huh. that's the way I would take that. Well, I've talked to him on the Internet. <laughs> and what does he say? I don't know. I just kind of, like, say things to him that he sucks and stuff, but... And he says, no, it's not like that. I still like you and Ugh. I want to be with you. Uh, well, what's up? Why don't you talk to him on the phone? Because I call him all the time and just I don't get an answer, so. Yeah, uh, like he's, he's either with his friends or, mm, I don't know. Sounds bad. How, how long were you going out with him? Five months. Five months. See and each other every day. Your boyfriend and girlfriend for five months every day. Yep. And uh, all of a sudden, you just, you sure you didn't? start screaming at him a week ago and tell me you never want to see him again? You know what? About on, for on Monday when we had sex, it's going to sound really gross, but I was, like, bleeding. Mm -hmm. I bled. You mean, like, you had your period? No. And I just what, that would, bled that would, on that him. Would chase him away somehow? You would, like, some sort of a I thought you were primitive, gonna... primitive man run screening out to the volcano to give a sacrifice for the <laughs> exposure to the... Blood know, of the like, womb of the. Sick, maybe that got him really sick. Like it was pretty gross, but. Oh, I mean, and it wasn't like the first time I'd ever had sex or something, but. All right, all right, uh, Blair. Yeah. Uh, go to the doctor. I'm gonna go to Planned Parenthood tomorrow. Great. Good girl. Good job. And don't worry about this guy. You get over him. What I you, will. You, I'm over him already. What are you yeah. using for contraception? Um, Blood. I was on Ortha Evra. Okay. All right. But all I right. don't have the money for it anymore, so I'm not. All right. Talk to Planned Parenthood about it. No. In the meantime, she uses blood. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Mm. That's her contraception. Yeah, nice. Let's talk to Sam, who's 27. <sighs> Sam. Yeah. What's up? Uh, I've got a little uh, conflict with, uh, with my girlfriend as far as sex goes. Mm-hmm. Um, we enjoy it when we do it. I would like to do it a lot more, but if a lot of times... She tells me how I come on too strong, mm -hmm. and I've, it's come to the point where lately, we've been together for a little more than a year now, and it's come to the point where a couple of times where she's wanted to really cut it off with me, just break up and be done. Because you're trying to force sex on her so frequently? Not. Yes. No, it's not force. It's, As it's, she sees it, you're trying to force sex yeah, on her? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All, right, All right. She was She was raped. That's what I'm going with. Uh, that not necessarily, I'm just, I'm just, but it's a good no, a that, bet. Not based on his question, based on Sam's cadence. Yeah, uh, is she was she sexually abused at some point? Uh, not not that I've not that she's ever come told me not about. Not that he's ever asked. Okay, she never said anything. She get along well with her dad? Uh no, her dad's her dad's uh, other side of the country, and they don't talk much. No, not a whole lot. When no did he cut out? Here, was she young when he cut out? Yeah. Did you have stepdads? Um, there was. But he's gone. Uh, yeah, he's gone too. Oh, that's always a uh, hold on. By the way, bad sign when stepdad checks out. Checks out too. Yeah. That means uh, either mom kicked him out for doing something bad, or crazy mom, or super crazy mom. Yeah. Either way, uh, daughter screwed. Sam. How, yeah. how many times a week does she want to have sex, or a month, or whatever? Maybe a couple of times a month she'll really get into it. A couple times a month, and how how often are you coming at her? Oh my goodness! Every day? Probably, probably yeah, every day. All right, and probably she, twice a day, huh? Now, how much? Yeah, you, twice a day. You, Maybe even three times sometimes. And you're you're pressuring. I mean, you must be pressuring her. Oh yeah. Okay. I, sometimes I feel like I am, and right. that's what I'm worried about. Is you know, if, should I see some kind of counselor or something? Because mm. I'm scared that I might be a little too addicted to it. Yeah. Mm. Well, does she have? Does it seem like she has issues, energy around this topic, Sam? Um. Yeah, she's pretty strong about where she stands with it. She, I mean, but she does get into it twice a she's month. Pretty right? strong about where she stands oh, with I it. Oh, I mean, isn't it? well. When we when we actually have sex, yeah, it's great. It's beautiful. I'm yeah, multiple orgasm. Everybody, we're both really into it. And See, I think this is just a mismatch of. of could be, yeah. Sam. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm, I'm going to ask you again. Does it? Does she have any energy with the sex? Does she get? She get angry, or she ever start crying, or she get weird on you when you're coming at her for sex? Is this an, a big issue, or, or are you just bothering her? I. Sometimes it seems like a big issue. Sometimes it does seem like she gets a little angry. It kind of freaks out on me about it. Uh, Sam, here's how I'd approach this. Is that she needs to understand that it's not about her. It's not about you objectifying her. Is that you have a different biological cadence. This is just you. This is who you are. And as such, you need to work with her at sort of managing that. Some of it you can manage on your own. You can masturbate or something. Mm -hmm. but, but some of it you need, she, she needs to participate with you in a reciprocal relationship where she acknowledges that that's who you are. You're that guy that needs sex every day. Now, she may absolutely not be able to keep up with that, but once a week, maybe a couple times a week, if she really accepts that it, that's you, not you objectifying her, it's you as who you really are as a biological being. Mm -hmm. It's hard for women sometimes because you mm -hmm. do they do feel so objectified when you're coming at them, yeah. at them, at them. I, I, I bet this one's got a little energy, I, too. They, maybe, but not necessarily. This is maybe one of those classic mismatches. It, it is. It's, um, I think it's some, some of the mismatch, but eh, dad's on the other side of the country, doesn't have any contact with him. I can yeah, tell oh, no, just this, by this guy's something. cadence yeah, there's well, something going I mean, on. She picks Sam. Let's be, let's be clear, oh, so. come on, buddy. Ben? Yes. You're 29? Yes. What's up? I have a question that only you can answer, Adam. Yes. I've been having a discussion with people about the whole pie versus cake. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I totally agree with your position, but somebody brought up the case of cheesecake, mm -hmm. which has a crust. Interesting. So does that fall into the pie category, or does that fall into the cake category? Oh. Well, oh, how dare you, Anderson? Everyone cares. Yeah, everybody cares, Anderson. I, I think you measure a cake and a pie by sort of density. Okay. Uh, I mean, that is definitely, and and the presence of frosting. And flour. Okay. And flour. Oh, oh well, come on, Drew, don't, don't confuse things too much, because I, I agree, there are certain things that seem to cross over into uh, different categories. Right. I say if something is uh, moist, it is dense, and does not possess frosting, and has a crust, it could fall into the pie category. It, it doesn't rise. And it and tastes it does, good. It doesn't rise and doesn't have frosting. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Fantastic. Right. And you never see it served at idiots' birthday parties. <laughs> That's how you really know. And there's no sheet cheesecake, is there? Oh. Well, maybe uh, there is. Thank no, God. it's only good. Uh, if the Jews eat it, it's good. <laughs> That's all you need to know about dessert. You want You want good dessert? Follow a Jew. Okay. <laughs> They'll lead you. They do this. This is what I do. <laughs> this is like you know what they do? You know, uh, you, if you're out in the bush and you're out in the, you're, or you're out in the desert and you need, you need water, you know what you do, Drew? Yeah. You take a, a baboon and you give him some salt and then you follow him. Right. You follow him and he leads you to the source of the water sure. because he knows where the water is. So you give the Jew a you dollar? You give the Jew <laughs> a dollar. It's a lot of money for a Jew, Drew. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's no, nice desserts. No, Jews love desserts. You just yeah, follow well, you a Jew. Them. You know, you don't just follow him. He's probably heading to he's heading to a deli or a bakery. Oh, no matter what. Find a Jew on the street. I see. They'll be walking to a deli or bakery and then just observe the Jew, see what they <laughs> order. They always go for the cheesecake, and that's what you get. As a matter of fact, you take the cheesecake and you put the fruit on it. Now you're really in the pie category. I don't think Pie you know, is a they, big they, thing for the Jewish community, though. Pie per se. Pie is not. No. And that's mm. something I'd like to straighten out with those people. That's mm. one of the things I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, bring up when I give my uh, my Albert the Simon <laughs> Wiesenthal, the Tolerance Museum. I'm doing a whole. Uh, it's a three-part presentation. I guess I should give a plug on it. It'll be uh, uh, it'll be coming up next week. What's but, it called? Uh, it, it's called uh, 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 Pie. The Goyim want to know why. <laughs> It's, uh, it's a dissertation that I put together about why you Jews won't eat our pies. Uh, it feels a little a little racist uh, to me. You, I'm going to sit down with the people I'm going to talk about. Yeah, yeah. We're going to have a dialogue. But the point that's, is... That's the first part of the series. Though. All three? It takes three? Three. It's a three-part series. Pie, so it's, a lot, it's a lot of... Like, like, a, like any pie. Three pieces. There's, there's many three. pieces yes, in the nice. pie. Point is, is... Uh, yeah, cheesecake has the word cake on it, but uh, yeah. I do look at it as a pie. Okay. Drew's right. It does not rise. Yeah. No rise, no frosting. 
That's right. We had a uh, was a uh, birthday for one of the writers over at uh, Jimmy Kimmel's show on Friday, and uh, here comes that cake. And again, you're just sitting there, and the guy's wife is trying to pass it out. Nobody gets up for cake. Notice that? Did you just go nuts? Cake is you stand, handed out. Did you get out. on a chair and start yelling at those no, people? No, I just, I just politely said, no, thank you. Mm. But here's all you need to know about the difference between cake and pie. Cake is distributed. Somebody has to go cut it out and, and then it. force it on people. Yeah. People don't get up. They don't line up. They don't. They don't prematurely get into it, except for you know retarded people and five-year-olds put their fingers no, in it. No, people run to the pie and they run and grab a fork and eat what's left in the tin and stuff. Yeah, yeah they mop up the yeah. tin. I, every party, every time I have a birthday party, I have three or four pies. They're gone. Yeah. I, as a matter of fact, I have to shoo people away from the pie. Oh, I've seen your friends like 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 yeah, Labrador yeah, licking the tin on the floor across no, the gotta, floor. No, you got to get them away from the yeah. pie before it's time to cut the oh, pie. Right, right. Like you're still serving the entree and there's people wanting to get into the pie. People line up for pie. Cake you have to hand out. Please take some cake. Uh, I'm not so good. Come on, take the cake. Uh, I'm pretty full. I ate a lot of brisket. I'm going to set the cake down here. You just look at it. And then at the end of the night, you're picking up the cake. They got cigarette butts put out in the frosting. That's all you need to know about cake, everybody. Pie? No. People line up. Why can't we replace cake with pie as the birthday celebration? You can't. Well, you've done it. Well, I got more to talk about with the cake, too, by the way. Because there's a dangerous trend. Well, you there's know, a dangerous trend going on with cake. You, you, you don't want to give out too much, Adam. They can join you at the Wiesenthal Center next week, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cake decorations are getting scary. I got stuff to talk about with that after this. Love Line. Love Line. 1 800 Love 191. We'll be right back. Half of all new HIV infections in this country happen to people under the age of 25. Protect yourself. Call toll free 1 866 344 KNOW. Own two weeks' notice starring Sandra Bullock and Hugh Grant now on DVD and video. When opposites attract, you're the most selfish human being on the planet. That's just silly. Have you met everyone on the planet? Sometimes the one you can't live with. I'm his chief counsel, not his babysitter. Is too much fun to live without. I think about you in the shower. Really? Not in a good way. Go behind the scenes on the DVD with hilarious bloopers and actor and director commentary. Alrighty. Sandra Bullock and Hugh Grant are a perfect match. Rick Leonard Maltin, hot ticket. Woo. <laughs> Own two weeks' notice now on DVD and video. Rated PG-13 for some sex-related humor. The beach at night is so romantic. Surging waves, foaming water. Oh, Eddie, did you bring something? Just my passion for you, Cheryl. Trojan Man! Greetings, beach bunnies! Hey, Trojan Man, what's up? More than just the surf, dude. <laughs> Before you hang ten, remember Trojan, America's most trusted latex condom. We can't surf without the right board, Eddie. Thanks, Trojan Man. Surf's back up. For the pleasure you want and the protection you trust, use Trojan. My job is done here. Hey, Larry, how about a ride through the neighborhood? I admire you, Vince, working as a crash test dummy all week, and still you want to drive after hours. Yeah, you gonna buckle up, my carefree companion? Why, we're not going far. I was hoping you'd say that. Up ahead, the birdbath of Dan and Sherry Hagee. Solid concrete, early 80s. The Hagees take great pride in their... Vince, look out! Picture window. Notice the fine antiques, like the 1922 billiards table. Currently under our wheels and the custom-designed balls flying through our windshield. <laughs> Next stop, the backyard and the two oldest trees in the county. They're awfully close together. Sir, please keep your arms and legs inside the car. I will. Help me pick them up. We hope you enjoyed your trip. Boy, when you drive through the neighborhood, you really drive through the neighborhood. Just wanted to show you, buddy. No drive is too short to buckle up for. Point well taken. You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle up, even on short trips. A message from the Department of Transportation and the Ad Council. Beep, 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 yeah. Hey, so you think you can drive properly after you've had a few drinks, huh? I don't think so. This is John Laroquette for RAD saying, come on, plan ahead. Pick the safe alternative. Give up the keys and choose a designated driver. The life you save may be mine. Happy holidays. Beep, 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 yeah. Drive it home. Did you hear what Smokey said? Did you hear what Smokey said? I want to know if you heard what Smokey said. Smokey said only you. 
This is Marty Stewart from my pal Smokey Bear reminding you if you must burn debris or trash, do it safely. Check local laws on burning and never burn on dry when you date. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. Smokey didn't mention nobody else. Smokey said only you. This message from the USDA Forest Service and your state forester and advertising council. Hi, I'm Malik Yobin. I play a cop on TV. When I was in high school, I got shot at point-blank range by another kid. My life almost ended. Each day, 10 kids are shot dead. Call 1-800-WE-PREVENT for information on what you can do to help. Not one more lost life. Not one more grieving family. Not one more. Getting shot changed my life. Don't wait for something to happen to you to take action. Get involved now. Not everyone gets a second chance. A message from the U.S. Department of Justice, the Crime Prevention Coalition, and the Ad Council. Hey, what's up? This is Darius from Hoodie and the Blowfish for Rad, recording artists against drunk driving. When you go out and party and you get drunk, then drive, you're not only loaded, you're a loaded weapon. When you celebrate, designate. Choose a designated driver every night. Remember, music lives, and so should you. Everybody, it's Loveline, I'm Adam, that's Dr. Drew, phone number 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Kelly Who from the X-Men are going to be coming on, uh, X-Men 2 coming on tomorrow night. Uh, just uh, before we get back to the phones. Uh, cake. Cake. Mm. As anyone who listens to the show knows, I'm not a big fan of the cake, but uh, one thing that's really becoming disturbing to me, a dis another disturbing cake-related trend, is that this uh, guy's birthday brought a cake out to him for uh, Jimmy Kimmel's show last week. They have this uh, new computer thing where they basically put a likeness of the, your face on oh, the yeah, cake. Oh, yeah, I've seen that, yeah. It's a little more than a likeness. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's your, your picture. It's, it's your a picture, picture yeah. on the cake. And uh, I, I mean, call me old-fashioned. I remember there was a sort of a Mighty Mouse. You know, you could get a couple of things. You, I My favorite was the goalpost that had uh, lurched to one side. Always some plastic stuff adorning the cake. But... I didn't like the actual likeness of the guy's face on the cake. I found it uh, disconcerting. On the other it was, hand... It, it, it borders on cannibalism at a certain point. That's what I'm saying. The, the, yeah, I see. It you're, actually you're is Jimmy. his face yeah, yeah. on it. No, yeah. it wasn't Jimmy's... Oh, it was the other guy. It was a guy named Rick, but, but primitive man would have thought that was somebody's head, someone's flattened head that you were cutting into. I'm saying, what's in it for me to cut into this guy's head? I like him. But, you know, it, it sort of raised the bar so much that when you ask people, if they don't have that capacity of the computer-generated stuff, they, they feel compelled to create, like, exact cartoon replicas of the person. Hey, it looks like hell. Of course. Yeah, so. But I don't want to see a picture of the person's face. At it's all. their birthday. Yeah, got i got to put a knife through the guy's cheek? Good times. Yeah. Right. And, and look. I remember when getting uh, your picture on a T-shirt was uh, a, a miracle of modern science? Yeah. Now, <laughs> yeah. Just, they're just blowing on everything now. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like seeing a guy's puss I'm eating. Hey, uh, Paul? Yeah? You're 19? No, you're 16. What's up? Well, uh, first I'd like to congratulate you guys on the service you do to our society. Thank you, Paul. Very welcome. You guys are awesome. <laughs> Thank right, you. Paul. What's up? Well... The other night, I was getting physical with my girlfriend. We've mm. never had sex. Shocking. I don't think we're ever going to. That's right. And, um, well, she kind of took my pants off, and we were, like, naked, and I kind of ejaculated by using her lips of her vaginal area, if that makes sense. Yeah. With, with the, she, did she have any underwear on or anything? No. Hmm. It was your... She was naked? Yeah. So you were, you were sort Yeesh. of... Kind of dry humping, but kind of not. Yeah. That sounds pretty you, you dangerous. Were, you were doing like a uh, taco hump. Sure. I was yeah. kind of doing the closest thing to having sex without actually having sex. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. pretty much, uh, if I did that I, to a girl, I'd count, I'd count her amongst yeah, the women I'd count, I had sex I'd with. i count that as sex. Yeah. Thank you, Drew. Me too. Okay. Well, <sighs> she moved out of the way when I ejaculated, and I didn't have a condom on, and we got all cleaned up, and like, you know, I took... I kind of washed myself off. And think. Yeah. And but yeah. we still fooled around a little bit more. Now, her, she, 
You still you fool around a lot. By the way, this is stuff you do at high in high school. Like if you were doing that uh, taco vulva hump nowadays, and then it was like out of the way. The next move would be out of the way. You're blocking the set, or out of the way. You're blocking the door. It wouldn't be like I mopped up and we 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 kept going. No. Nah. No, yeah. No. Yeah. All right. So you mopped up. You kept going. And what? Yeah, now, and why aren't you guys having sex? Mm, I think we're both kind of against it. I'm pretty hardcore straight edge. I see. Yeah. I see. Uh-huh. So he's saying his delicate sensibilities prevent him from doing something like this. Yes. I understand. Hey, I respect that, man. I mean, a hey, penis thanks, inside of a vagina can be very. Uh... I I really I really count this. I really think of this as sort of more than sex. Yeah, it is. In my man. own sort of yeah. retarded way. It, it is. It's almost because it has a perverse quality to it, you know? Yeah, it's like if, if if your wife screwed around with a guy, you'd rather she just had sex with a guy than did this sort of crazy using, uh, using her uh, vagina like a bun and his penis like a hot dog and just rub it until he had to yell, clear the deck kind of thing, you know? Bombs away. Yeah, it's a, because there's a there's a, there's something sort of deviant almost about it. I know uh, Paul's just trying to trying to get to heaven on a technicality. Yeah. 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 So, well, and then yeah. Well, there's another factor to factor in. See, her menstrual cycle isn't what we'd call normal by any stretch of the word. Her magical way. cycle? Huh? Her her menstrual cycle? Yeah. So I don't even know if she can get pregnant. Oh, she can. Okay. She, she goes like nine months without a period, and H- then how old like is she? Eleven. Seventeen. Yeah. Seventeen. She can. Okay, but Paul, you didn't. You, you know, how long ago was this? <laughs> Friday. Friday. Uh, how, uh, no, I would even think about the morning after pill for her. You would? Yeah. Tomorrow? Yeah. How about she gets the morning after pill tomorrow, Paul? Well, see, I already suggested that. Yeah. And she shot me down on that. Why? She thinks it sterilizes her or something. Uh, All right. Okay, she's that's nutty. That's not true. It's not true. Okay, no. Paul, she, I'm sure she's not pregnant. The mil- so let's there, just there have been forward. tens of millions of uses of that product with never a single negative side effect. It's over the counter worldwide. Yeah. All right. I feel like I got to rinse my mouth out. Other than nausea and vomiting, anyway. Right. You mean it's a side effect? Yeah. All right, Drew, let's focus now. What? I am focused. Drew's been staring at his pager for 20 minutes. Right. What's going on, buddy? Amanda? Yeah? You're, you're, Drew, turn the screen down a little. I huh. can't see a damn thing. Just tw- lean it. Yeah, hold on a second. Adam. Drew, Adam. can you see it better when it's leaned down or I, worse? I can see it in any of these things, so you got to tell oh, me. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. All this time because... When it's uh, so when your, it, your assumption is I'm trying to make it difficult for you no, to see. No, when, to... It, when it's like this, it's uh, unreadable. It's I, completely black to I me. I can see it, no problem. And when it's like this, it's completely readable. Okay. But you always turn it up, so I'm assuming you're doing it for your, mm. because you can't read it the other way. Oh, my God. This is a breakthrough we're having, Amanda. <laughs> this is huge. I sort of prefer it down like this. Cause it's just... Oh, are you kidding me? Yeah. Why do you keep turning it? Why, do you, why are you always turning it up? It doesn't really matter to me, so I'll grab it and turn it around just the way I'm grabbing it. But but if down, that's fine. I make an effort to keep it down. All right. Yeah. Amanda. Yeah. 16. Yes. Yeah. What's up? Um, I gauged my ears, and um, I was just wondering, like, if I'm older and I decide that that was a really stupid move, if I could take out these earrings and... Um, when you're older. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking about... Not like, yeah. I mean... What's like, gauging? Like, like putting, a, a, putting the progressive corks, hoops you know, in? cork plugs in there. You, no, no, it's not that big. It's, like, smaller than a pencil, but, like, the hole in my ear is, like, large enough to see through now. Um, so you, like, kind of stretch out... I don't. I don't have any experience well, with this. True, isn't that what Drew's saying? But well, she's she's not at a cork size yet. Yeah, but she's getting there. That's the plan, right? Yeah. It's not even the size of a cork, man. It's like smaller than a pencil. All right. If you were to stop now, mm-hmm. I bet it might seal up. Well, I mean, I want to keep it this size. It's like it's small enough to like see through, but it's... Uh, all right. Why? So they can see you don't have a brain. No. It's like I don't know. No. I just like the way it looks and stuff. And well, nobody likes the way it looks. Well, I do. All right. And good. Have fun effing yourself. <laughs> so it won't be able to heal or anything when I get older? Uh, well, no. At a certain point it won't, yeah. I don't know what that point is, and God knows maybe there's some plastic procedures to build it back up and all, but I doubt it. Oh. Okay. It's Do something happen. else. It, all right. Write, write uh, horrible poetry or something. Can, all right. Can you please? <laughs> okay. All right. There you go. 
Oh, everyone's angry. They gotta put holes in themselves. Uh, Linnell? Yes? You're 15? Yes. What's up? Um, my ex-boyfriend thinks I gave him oral herpes because he got a cold sore after he was making out with me, but I don't even think I have it, so how could I have given it to him? Mm-hmm. Well, sometimes when people make out with a new partner, they just get a little something. Just from the irritation. And people get the viruses in the environment, they have it themselves, didn't notice it, so it could just be from him. It doesn't have to be from you. Because, like... It's like a big sore on the outside of his mouth or a little canker sore inside? I haven't seen him. He, um broke up with me a week ago and called me yesterday bitching at me calling me a liar that I never told him the truth about anything that thank I was god a dirty whore listen and all this stuff. dirty whore this guy's an ass thank god he's out of your life just just hey somebody like that Linnell I, I'm sorry you haven't learned this lesson of 15 I don't know what I would have done okay. if somebody talked to me that way but just cut your losses just end contact stay away the more you if you interact with this guy the more painful it's going to be you stinking whore! Just, just, just stay away Adam, from him. That's not very. That, nice. that was the old Adam. I know, Cyber Adam. I not, love not that. the new Adam. Hey, hey, uh, Linnell. Mm -hmm. Good. You got. You have your dignity. You have your pride. You're too good for this guy. Well, and you didn't get in a real relationship with him, where he could have become a stalker. These, we, these are people that become real problems in relationships. Because, like, I did have a cold sore like eight months ago. Oh well, there you go. You did give you it to bitch. Him. You, right. you did give it to us. I did? Yeah. But I thought it wasn't contagious unless you had one. No, well, well, it's wait always a contagious. Well, everybody gets a cold sore yeah. at some point. But it's potentially always contagious. Really? Uh, yeah. Well, no, don't think that way. You're very contagious when you have the sore, and you're potentially contagious at all times. But it, everybody gets a cold sore at some point in their life, do they yeah. not? Yeah, certain ones are herpes and certain ones are not. But the ones right. outside... Well, don't, that, so screw it him. Should I go get a test or something? No, no it's not that you're you can fine. do it. No, no, no. You're fine, fine. Adam, baby. Don't. Can I kiss your ass for a little bit? Yes, go ahead. I adore you. Like, when they first put me on hold, I was shaking. I always shake when they put me on hold. Mm -hmm. Me because too. Because I'm so excited Anger. to talk to you. I had to, like, clean my room so that I would calm down. Nice. <laughs> you can get a lot done when you're on hold, by the way. <laughs> on this yeah, show. I um, balanced my checkbook. Yeah. How does that work, that balancing your checkbook? How do you balance a checkbook? Yeah, ever I, I know theoretically what you're supposed to do. I, I I never did that. You're supposed to subtract the amount every time you write a check. Most you write people, it in. Yeah. Most people just let it ride. I bounced so many checks in my life. Yeah. Oh God damn! If I bounce checks, I, I would say. Let's say over a hundred. Well, in the day, it was impossible to get a a, a uh, balance. You have to go to the bank. Yeah. And wait in line. Well, it, the uh, the business I was in is I was, you know, working for myself doing doing carpentry. So I would front a lot of the money for the materials and stuff to get moving with a project. And then people were kind of slow and crappy about paying me. Therefore, I would have checks out for the for the materials and people wouldn't get it back to me. Oh. Yeah, good times. Huh? I fronted this bitch like 250 bucks worth of crown molding once. Rich 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 old divorcee somebody died or something and left her a ton of money lived up in uh, you know by oj's house over there and uh got angry at me and uh basically told me to hit the hit the bricks she was a total c anyway and i couldn't deal with her and uh so i said fine so i said uh you know i got all this money you know i got, I got all this stuff fronted she was like yeah screw you she just she just took it I wrote her a letter. I said, uh, "Listen, I'm poor. It's 250 bucks, a ton of money to me, and it's it's sitting in your possession. Why don't you just pay me for the, just for the materials I bought for your job?" I said, nah. What was her deal? What what what, were you, what was the problem you were having with her? She she was uh, she was wacko. I know I know it sounds like BS, but she was really a nut job. I wasn't uh, wasn't me this time. Yeah, it was good times. It's great. That's a, that's a lovely lovely lady. I, I hope she's dead. I really hope somebody just uh, came up behind her with a hammer. Well, uh, that's great when you're really stinking rich and, you, and some guy says, look, I don't have any money, and you go, yeah, that's funny. I'll just keep stuff. We'll uh, take a quick break. We'll be right back after this. Hello? Who's this? Uh, this is Loveline. 1-800-LOVE-191. Loveline, we'll be right back. Amazing 
10 kids die by gunfire every day. Help stop the violence. Call 1-800-WE-PREVENT. Not one more lost life. Not one more. Was blind, but now I see. A public service message from this station, the U.S. Department of Justice, the Crime Prevention Coalition, and the Ad Council. Mommy, Mommy! It's all right. Daddy's here. Where's Mommy? <laughs> mommy doesn't feel well. How come Mommy's sick so much, Daddy? I don't know, honey. Alcoholism affects your family, your friends, your job. All the things that are important to you. I want Mommy to be the way she used to be. Me too. Alcoholism is a treatable disease. Get help before you lose the really important things in life. A public service message from the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Yo, I'm Alfonso Ribeiro for RAD. Hey, partying's a good time, have fun, but you don't have to get in the car and do it. Get a taxi, get a limo, get whatever you want, get a friend, get home safely. Don't drink and drive. Hey, Larry, you think we'll ever have a baby? Yes, we're crash dummies. Yeah, but your head's about the size of a baby. Here, give it to oh, me, will you? What are you doing? I'm taking it off! Oh. Oh, I'm using your head in the rear-facing infant seat. Up in front, kids won't know what hit them in the airbag goes. Where are we going, Vince? You know that brick wall with big bullseye? Sure, like the back of my... Holy cow, Larry, you're embedded in the seat. I can't understand you. I'll go get a tire iron. You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your kids in the back seat. A message from the Department of Transportation and the Ad Council. What's up? This is Warren G, you know what I'm saying? I'm here giving it up for RAD because they do a lot of good things for people. And uh, I just want to say, before you drink, make sure that you got somebody that can drive your butt home so you won't crash or get pulled over and get a DUI. So go ahead and follow the rules. If you're trying to make you see, nobody does it better. Yo, this is Lamont Bentley with a message from Rat. Now listen up. I know that you're young, and I know that you love to party. But when you party, don't be selfish. Don't drink and drive. Living in a world like this one is hard to feel. You can't change it, but we must try. Hi, I'm Malik Yoba, and I play a cop on TV. I wrote this song because I need to see things change. Too many kids are dying in our streets from violence. I know because I was shot when I was 15. I survived, but each day there are 10 kids that don't. And we can do something if we just try. Be brave enough to walk away from violence and those that push it. Make a pledge to yourself to turn away from guns as a solution to solve your conflict. You can find smart, peaceful ways to settle arguments. I survived getting shot, but not everyone does. Don't let it happen to you. All you have to do is try. A message from the U.S. Department of Justice, the Crime Prevention Coalition, and the Ad Council. Hey, everybody. Love line, I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LVE-191. Got uh, full service gas for the first time in my life uh, oh my last God. Friday. We, we in another state or something? No, I didn't mean to. Oh. I was, uh, ironically, in a horrible part of uh, downtown Los Angeles, pulled into a shell station. It was, it was really... <laughs> it was the worst full service and only full service experience I've ever had. I got out of the car... I pulled the uh, pump out, put the credit card in, was about ready to start pumping, and a guy came around and he said, this is a full service, uh, full service island. And I looked around and all the other ones were full, and I went, eh, well, I'll live it up a little. I said, uh, hey, fine, fine, uh, fill her up. And put the thing back on the thing, and he then said, uh, yeah, okay. 
And I went, got back in the car, like, yeah, give me, the, give me the deluxe treatment. He went back into the station. He had to attend to something. So I was just sitting out in my car for a while. So then I got out and uh, started pumping the full service price. <laughs> So I just put the thing on and went back and climbed back in the car, waiting for him to, uh, you know, clean the windshield or, uh, you know, check the oil or do whatever. He just came out when the thing was done, put the thing back in and uh, asked me if I needed a receipt. I thought, well, that was very ungratifying for me as a full service experience. Extra 35 cents a gallon. No, I, I didn't because... He he wasn't really much he could do. I guess he it was like it was like in the barrio kind of thing. And I guess nobody used a full service. And he was sort of surprised. I guess he was in the middle of something. He ran out to tell me I was using it. Probably he, alerts he people every day. Yeah, get out of here. Yeah, get out of here. And I said, fine, I'll take it. And then he didn't know what to do. But I guess he wasn't prepared. Like he never used it. Oh, I did. Uh, would would have kind of liked the squeegee though. You know what I mean? Yeah. John. Yeah. You're 20. Yeah. What's I up? Thought- I want to say what's up to my main man, Mayonnaise. Yeah, thanks, buddy. Hey, how you doing? I, I like to call you Adam, king of the analogy. Thank you. What's up? Uh, my question is for Dr. Drew. Yeah. Um, when I urinate, I have, uh, sometimes I have these things floating in my urine. They're kind of like little spiral things, kind of little stringy things. Huh. What is and that, Drew? Have you been to Asia? Oh, worms. Yeah. <laughs> Have yeah. you? Have you? Uh, no. Hmm. Um, they're just like uh, kind of stringy things. And uh, my girlfriend says it's normal. She's a nurse. Ma'am? And uh, what? she says that's kind of normal. What well, she say it is? Uh, she didn't really say what it is, but she says uh, most people have like little tiny particles floating in their urine. Yeah, they can be particles. They can be debris. But stringy, you know, things that look like worms can, can be worms. There, there's something called schistosomiasis that... Uh, any movement of these things? No, no movement. Uh, How big are they? They're just like a like the size of a thread, kind of little small pieces, maybe a little smaller than thread. Hmm. It can also be uh, just mucus, as mucus at all. But yeah, get it, you know. Get maybe it's after he beats off too. Is it after you beat off? No. All right. Everything's after I beat off, so it would have to be yes. Nice. See what I'm saying, Drew? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like. Do you eat? Yeah, after it's after, yeah. Yeah. After yeah. sleep, yep. After you beat off? Yeah, urinate, yeah. yep. Number you watch two. TV? Yep. yep. After you beat off? Yep. That's yeah. It's like, it's like breathe. Is it after you breathe? <laughs> after you beat off? Yeah, breathe. Beth? Yeah. You're 22? Yep. Oh, baby doll, what's up? <laughs> well, um, Drew, I need some help with this. I need help with a lot of things, but, um, uh, it's been really getting to me. I'm trying to figure out how I can figure out. You got to turn your TV down. If I was abused as a kid. Hey, Beth? Yeah. I'm going to start abusing you as an adult if you don't turn your TV down. I leave it up for privacy. Uh, um, all right, hold on a second. Answer she was, is abuse. Yes, she was abused. <laughs> How do we know she was abused? Because she's a bitch. She's angry. She was angry. You know, I was reading it. When when that first thing I said hi. Yeah, I know. Said hi to her. Be doing a lot of trauma survivor reading lately. And uh, one one of the things that they're talking about is that one of the common qualities of people that have been traumatized is they they don't develop the capacity to regulate aggression. Mm -hmm. It's dysregulated all the time. And so it's just coming out of them. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, they have a sort of a characteristic way of relating to other people where they're poised and ready for for attack all the time and they induce attack they kind of you know yeah they, they and they may attack you before you have a chance to attack them is sort of the thing yeah they're 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 sort of ready for uh assault e- eager for the fray well not eager for it but just well like, like it's in, like it's wired in they're going to protect themselves right these are guys who are like uh, guys who uh, carry handguns in their uh, glove boxes and like to drink and drive. The, the, the handgun's there for protection. Next thing you know, they shoot the neighbor's kid. Right. That it's, it's initially there to protect themselves, but it ends up getting used on somebody sooner than later. Right. All right, let's get back with Beth. All right, we're going for yes, you were abused. Well, I don't... <laughs> well, because you're angry. 
the, the way you make us feel. With, with yeah, the, uh, we both feel the beat. So anyway, what, what's the question about? I'm sorry, Adam. It's all right. No, That's no, all right. It's, it's not. It's not. It's a, it's a we're beat. not. A, we're all right with you. We yeah, just yeah. feel abuse. We agree. Well, yeah, except for calling me a bitch. But hey, anyway. Um, there it goes. You see how that went? Go ahead. Yeah, I get you, to... bitch. Yeah. Shut up. Um, I'm trying to figure out how I can figure out what happened or if I was or. Well, here's the deal. That that. Uh, I don't know. Have you have you been in psychiatric hospitals or anything like that? Is that why you're struggling with this? Well, yeah, and okay. I've been diagnosed yeah, borderline. with borderline yeah. for a couple of years. Yeah. And so, and you know, borderline is sort of a trauma survivor's uh, diagnosis. Yeah, and, and it's how. And all right, it doesn't matter. The 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 getting over the trauma, the whole notion that you have to. Well, I can't get over something. I don't. Yes, you can. Listen right. to me. Listen, that the the old notion that you have to sort of evoke memories of the trauma and sort of expunge the feelings associated with that are completely considered unnecessary and maybe even dangerous. What what the current therapies are are guided towards is sort of building regulatory systems, so you don't interact or, or react in such a way that such a remnant of the original trauma. The, what Adam and I felt no, here. True. What are you talking about? You're traumatizing me now with your boring <laughs> talk. In other words, she was arrested in development, and she has various sort of characteristic way of relating to the people. Yes. The idea to change that, she needs to build other mechanisms. She needs to build regulatory mechanisms rather than worrying about. Eliciting yes. and memories right. and emotions um, from the I'm going to put it in plain English. Let's just, it, whether you were traumatized or not, Beth, you're acting like someone who was traumatized. So get some help. Yeah. So she get is. some help. She is. That's all you have to do. But she's, but you're, to, to spend your time worrying about evoking explicit memories is a waste of time. Yes. It's probably been coming up because I have a rape anniversary coming up fast. You have a what I anniversary? Rape anniversary. Oh, yeah. geez. You have those, don't you? I think my wife and I are celebrating our fifth rape anniversary. Mm -hmm. Christ, I didn't get her anything. What do you get her? Like uh, one of those, uh, one of those forensic tests, or well, what? Uh, what? What year rape anniversary? Anniversary on? Second year on July fourth. Second. So that's that's silver. And again, you probably have some post-traumatic stress from that. But the yeah, I get tactile flashbacks. Yeah. Like Who did this to you? Um, it was just a first date thing. First date? Yeah. And, uh, what happened? Um, I said yes to certain things, and then he just kind of started going all the way. I, you know, said no about 30 times, crying, told him it hurt, told him to stop, and... Where were you? In the back of his truck. Oh. All right. Uh, well, bad times, baby doll. But listen... Here, do you have any kids? No. Yeah. Good. Yeah, okay. Here's the plan. Lots of therapy and no kids. All righty. All right. I, uh, well, we've talked about this a thousand times. I, I don't know what to do with these people. They just uh, don't have any kids and get a lot of therapy. Can't go wrong with that. That includes the fellas, too. Adam? Yeah. All right. I, I don't take a break. I got an ass full of you. Let's take a break. <laughs> he was on the air for six <laughs> seconds. I had an ass full of him. I heard half a syllable out of Adam. I didn't want to talk to him anymore. We got to take a break. Adam's got to... Let, let's uh, let's put Adam on ice for a couple seconds. Right. Who do you got here? Who do we like here, Drew? Uh, let's see here. Uh, you know, uh, uh, put the plea Catherine. out for some big jug calls every... Uh, about once every three months. And uh, about once every three months, we don't get any. Take a quick break. We'll be right back. All right, guys. Here's the deal. Looking to hook up? Call the Dateline. Sick of wasting time with the wrong person? Call the Dateline. One call is all you need to make. Call the Dateline. 1-877-889-DATE. You know what I'm saying out there? Adam and Dr. Drew will be right back on Loveline. Okay, people, come on, settle down, settle down. Everyone settle down. Joanne DiCarlo? Present. William Robertson? Here. Raymond Vega? Yeah, I'm here. Peter Lawrence? 
John Earhart. Marona Maxwell. Andrea Thompson. Andrea Thompson. Every day, 10 children are killed by gunfire. 10 dead kids, 10 kids too many. The violence won't stop until you help stop it. To find out how, call 1-800-WE-PREVENT for free information. That's 1-800-WE-PREVENT. And please call today. Not one more lost life. Not one more grieving family. Not one more. A public service message from this station, the U.S. Department of Justice, the Crime Prevention Coalition, and the Ad Council. Hello, my name is Rome, and I'm here for RAD. Music is very important to me, but what's most important is life. Please, please choose a designated driver. Don't drink and drive. You put the spell on me. I'm hooked, baby. Crazy love. What'll it be, lady? You think you might be pregnant. You need to see your doctor. You want to tell your family, and you need to stop drinking alcoholic beverages. The best choice for you and your baby is to stop drinking and call your doctor for advice. Congratulations. You were right. You're pregnant. If you have questions about drinking during your pregnancy, ask your doctor. Be good to your baby right from the start. A public service message from the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Hey, this is Kate Pearson from the B-52s. For Rad, getting drunk is your own business, but when you drive drunk, you make it everybody's business. Don't drink and drive. Be responsible, plan ahead, and choose a designated driver. Remember, music lives, and so should you. Baby, you want to go for a ride? Why, Vince, I didn't know you cared. I don't, but I'm looking for a baby. Uh, but, Vince, we're crash dummies. Well, your head's about the size of a baby. <laughs> what are you doing? Taking it off! Ah! I'm using your head in a rear-facing infant seat. Why? To show how babies up front are in airbag danger. You know I get sick when I ride backwards and without a body. Up in front, kids won't know what hit them when the airbag blows. Then why do people put their kids up front, Vince? I don't know. Maybe it makes them feel better to see them sitting by their side. Although, if my baby looked like you, he'd ride in the truck. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know that brick wall with the big bullseye? Uh, I can see it vaguely in the back of my mind. Well, in two seconds, that's exactly where it's going to be. <laughs> Holy cow, Larry, you're embedded in the seat. Tire iron. I can't understand you. I'll go get a tire iron. Thank you. You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your kids in the back seat. A message from the Department of Transportation and the Ad Council. Hi, this is Dennis Franz of NYPD Blue for RAD, recording artists, actors, and athletes against drunk driving. My character, Andy Sipwitz, has learned that there are a lot of things in life you have no control over. Fortunately, driving drunk isn't one of them. If you drink, don't drive. Choose a designated driver, and if one of your friends has been drinking, get the keys. Friends don't let friends drive drunk. A message from the Department of Transportation, Ad Council, National Association of Broadcasters, and RAD. Did you hear what Smokey said? Did you hear what Smokey said? I want to know if you heard what Smokey said. Smokey said only you. This is Marty Stewart from my pal Smokey Bear reminding you if you must burn debris or trash, do it safely. Check local laws on burning and never burn on dry when you date. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. Smokey didn't mention nobody else. Smokey said only you. This message from the USDA Forest Service and your state forester and advertising council. Oh, Bob. Oh, Terry. <laughs> Greetings, young lovers. Lovers? We weren't having, you know, sex. We were just kind of fooling around. Fooling around? Well, hush my mouth. Where I come from, they call that sex, too. Which means you can get a sexually transmitted disease, like herpes, gonorrhea, even HIV. Whoa. Always use a latex condom to help reduce the risk. Thanks, man. My job is done here. This message has been brought to you by Trojan, America's most trusted condom. Hey, 
your buddy in love line, I'm Adam, that's Dr. Drew, phone number 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Kelly Hu is going to be in here tomorrow night, hot Eurasian, I don't even know if she's Eurasian, she may be my Asian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 Has it been? No, shut no. up. It's too early in the show, Drew, okay. too early in the show. Uh, she's going to be on, she's from, uh, X-Men, uh, 2, which, uh, X-Men 2, which is, uh, getting pretty good reviews. It also, uh, topped the box office this weekend. It did. Yeah. People, uh, people say better than, uh, better than the first. Yeah. I didn't get into all that crap myself, but, mm. uh, fair enough. I, I, the comic, I'm, I don't like reading, as you know, Drew, so I never got into comic books as a kid. And I guess I never got into fantasy, and then it all seems weird to me now. Yeah. People get really weird about that stuff. Yeah. Like grown men get really excited. Like, they're doing Hulk, and then the Silver Surfer's coming out in 2008. So we're all looking for... Really? You're, uh, Bob, you're 37. Uh, you're looking forward to this. They're getting to argue. They want Val Kilmer to play the uh, Silver Surfer, Drew. But uh, no way. No way Val Kilmer's a Silver Surfer. You know, it's really? Hey... Hey, Earth to uh, calling all nerds. What's going on here? You're an adult. What is up? And Drew, have you ever uh, shot a look to uh, Engineer you Anderson attempting to cue him to do something and uh, ever had him actually do it? Well, what would you want, though? That calling that, all that's nerds? That's the point. The Star Trek uh, sound, right? Would that be now, that thing? See, right. see, Drew, here's where you're... Here's, here's where... This is you. I this think is you in a obvious. nutshell. I think things are obvious to me. They should be obvious to other people. I want to know. I've been doing this show for uh, seven and a half years with you. Yeah. Have you ever called producer Ann to chime in on a subject that she knew the subject we were talking about? <laughs> and have you ever tried to cue engineer Anderson to put in a sound effect that he was able to do? Hey, I play by my own rules, all right? Yeah, God damn yeah, it, I'm not Anderson's gonna, uh, uh, not going to... Even if he knew the one you were talking about, he would not do That's it. That's you. You ask you to do something, you do something Anderson different. is like a cat. There you go. <laughs> There you see? go. Yeah. Ten minutes later. <laughs> I love looking at Drew because I see him looking at Anderson. He does it about once every three weeks. He looks over to Anderson and gives him that, come on, buddy, now it's the time to make your move. And Anderson always just looks at him like, I don't know what the F you want from me. I got a thousand sound effects here. I'm no close. I've narrowed it down to about 600. When you say calling all nerds, isn't it obvious what you're talking about? One, one could make an argument for the Star Trek sound effect. Yes. Calling all nerds. <laughs> Thank you. Let's uh, let's move forward to the phones here. Now, what I'm very say? excited about this. We're having uh, a revisitation mm -hmm. by Kenneth. Which one's Kenneth? Kenneth's the guy that twisted the head off the uh, old lady in the morgue. I thought it was an old man. I think he said an old lady. Really? Revisit, revisit. Yeah, hello? Oh, we're going to do a revisit? Oh, we're going to do a little... Uh, you got something there, Anderson? Here point, the pivotal point that you decided, I, got, I want me a head, uh, a human head. I was thinking of like a decoration um, for an aquarium. Mm hmm. That was uh, him calling uh, two weeks ago. Let's, uh, or not even quite two weeks ago. Kenneth? Yeah, hello. Hello. There he is. How's it going? Good. I will never forget this voice. Kenneth called uh, about uh, 10, 11 days ago, maybe 11, 12 days ago. Wanted to know if uh, him pulling the head off a uh, human corpse in a mausoleum and bringing it home, putting it in his uh, aquarium so a snake could crawl through it would be a bad idea telling the ladies about this. If it would uh, scare them off, and I think it has so far. Hey, uh, Kenneth? Yeah, hello? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I actually called tonight, though, wondering if, if a person can actually catch a yeast infection from a girl. Yep. A male? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Kroll has had an experience yeah. with this. Yep. Yeah. If you're uh, humping a corpse, you can pick something up, Kenneth. Yeah. I'm telling you what. Hey, uh, was this a female or male corpse you pulled the head off of? It was of? a female. Female. Drew's right as usual. Yeah, he described, an old, he described the old lady. Old lady. Yeah. All right. Had a perm and stuff, too. Oh. Perm. Yeah. Mm hmm. Oh, Kenneth. And uh, you say uh, you were able to get the head off of the corpse without using any tools? Oh, at first I started to, like, cut on it, and I said, screw it, you know, and just twisted its head off. What did you cut with? I had a kitchen knife. Kitchen knife. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the corpse had been deceased for how long, you think? About four years. 
about four years. But it held up pretty good with the formaldehyde and everything coursing through its veins? Um, yeah. I mean, it looked like tree bark, but it had a weird smell to it. It made the whole room smell like formaldehyde. Mm-hmm. But held up okay. What about the eyes? Glass eyes? Um, no. Actually, paper. Paper eyes? Yeah, there was paper instead of the eyes. They're not making those eyes like they used to, Drew. Oh, cotton just in there. Just, uh, were the eyes open or closed? Oh, they were closed, but once I started peeling, like, skin off of it and stuff, there's... Sure. Like, why were you peeling skin off? Well, he got horny. It up and he need a, he need wanted to take... Wait, wait. Why did you peel the skin off? So I was going to clean, uh, peel the skin off of it, so it was just the skull, because I was going to boil it after that. He wanted the skull. So it would be polished and stuff, you know? Yeah, he wanted a skull for his... Uh, well, I thought he wanted the whole head in there. Nah, he wanted a skull for the aquarium. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, no, I, I talked to an mortician guy. Mm -hmm. While I was in prison, mm -hmm. and he said, "What was he doing there? Huh? What was he doing in prison? I think he got pulled over for having some some car that someone reported stolen, but it wasn't really restolen. Stolen. Yeah, of course, yeah. Of course Everybody's not. in the <laughs> joint for nothing. And, uh, Hold on, I love talking. I've been to prison and talked to guys in prison doing a man show bit, and according to the prisoners, it's just you hear these guys like, "What are you in for? Life with no chance of parole? What'd you do?" Nothing. What happened? Came home from work one day. Old lady called me up. Next thing I'm here. No, no, no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You don't. You don't get. You don't get life. You know, life with no chance of parole for nothing. Well, they said I stabbed a guy at a bar, but I was never in that bar. What happened? I was just at work. Cops showed up. Took me. It's like it's always like every, really? single, every single guy. Every single guy. It's like. This guy is driving a car, got reported stolen. Wasn't actually stolen, he's just driving a car. Cops pull up. Next thing he's in for nine years. <laughs> really? Really? Is that. Uh, could our system possibly be that bad? No. Could it, could it be that bad? All right, Kenneth. Yeah. All right, so uh, your mortician was in there for driving a car that wasn't stolen. Yeah, and he told me. It's Hold on, Drew. By, by, uh, by Kenneth's, uh, by the mortician's law logic. We're all in a lot of trouble. Well, we, any of us could get My car is yeah. not currently stolen. It could happen to you. Yeah, happen all, to but he said it's common for them to put paper in where the eyes are. Ah, okay. ah I see. Right. I see the mortician, yeah. We still never got out why you had to use a real head, why you couldn't use a... He wanted a real skull. Yeah, I wanted a skull. You know, it's, it's like the real thing right there. Right. Why not a facsimile of the real thing? I don't know. I would have probably talked down on it or something. Hey, uh, hey, Kenneth. Yeah. There's two guys you sound like. Oh. You, sa you sound a little like uh, Randy, the Macho Man Savage. Can you yeah. do him? No, I don't really watch wrestling. You don't watch him because you, you do have his have his sound. Oh, a little bit. No, you, you have his sound when he's not doing the voice. Yes, yes. Woo, maybe. <laughs> yeah, that's him. Come on, do, Kenneth, do a woo, maybe. Woo, maybe. No, but really, come on, dig in a little bit. Let's go. Like a whoa, maybe. Yeah, give it a serious one. Give it a real try. Give do the Randy do it play it like again, Anderson. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, give me oh yeah. Come on. Oh yeah. Yeah, but come on, dig in now. Let's go. Right. Bigger. Like an oh yeah. Bigger. 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 Like oh yeah. Now you're giving me blimp size. I want Grand Canyon size in action. So you want like a yell? I want mammoth big. Like oh yeah. Yeah, bigger. Oh yeah. I want Star Jones ass big. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh <Kenneth. Whoa. laughs> I don't know if we can do that. Come on, give me one good one. One good one with, with what? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Maybe the missionary position? <laughs> <laughs> what was the other voice? Uh, the, other, the other one is uh, Jesse James from uh, Monster Garage. Uh, Sounds like him, oh. too. Okay, buddy. Uh, so anyway, yes, you can get a yeast infection from uh, having sex with a woman, although it doesn't happen very often. And uh, how's your little brother doing? Uh, he gets out of camp on the 13th. Fantastic. Is Jew Jewish camp? No, he went to a fire camp. Fire camp. Because he didn't talk to the probation officer. Ah. Uh, so all right, so he's doing great. He's going to be uh, he's going to be paroled any day now. Pretty much. Doing great. Doing great. How old is he? 15. 15. Doing great. And he's Top a, he's of the in, world. He's in a work camp. Yeah, because he, he um, didn't talk to the probation officer. Yeah. We got yeah. pulled over one How many? Bro he, yeah, he didn't do anything. Yeah, well, everyone is probation officer. He was right? probably driving a car that wasn't stolen. He got pulled over at 15. No, uh, he got he crashed into a side of a building with a forklift, caused five thousand dollars of damage, and they put him in juvenile hall. Uh, can, can he? Is 15 drive a forklift? No, he stole the forklift. Yeah. Listen, hey Kenneth, 
to do me a favor. Uh, it, y- your mom, kick her right in the coos fr- from me, would you? Yes. Tell her she owes me about uh, 80 grand in taxes well, she's for you spew f ups. She's what? You just got out of prison too, all back. Yeah, no Do me for it. See, see if she can just poison. It, it's, the whole family can just eat poison, and it's just a sort of massive Jonestown type uh, mercy killing situation. All right. Oh. All right, buddy. Good times. Wait, he really will now, dude. Yeah, that's, that's my concern. Wait, he's gonna eat poison? Mm. Poison other people. No, I want to. I want his own, own family. Right. Kenneth. Yeah. You're not gonna eat poison, are you? Oh no. All right, good times. <laughs> How bad a thing would it be, Drew? Would it be that bad? Really? That kids, uh, both kids been in the joint uh, by the time they're uh, 18. Mom's in the joint now. Just don't have the goddamn kids, you screw-ups. Why is she in jail, though? We have to know. <clears throat> I'm guessing she was driving a car that wasn't stolen. Forklift. Kenneth? Oh. Yeah. Mom's in for meth. No, Mom was in for fourth no. DUI. Yeah, dogs. Fourth DUI. Yeah. She wow. Already, she already got out though. Mm. She went in like a few months before I went in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's doing good. And where's your dad? Just oh, he kids. moved up north. He he quit cooking like two years ago. Cooking. Meth. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's definitely some meth going on here. And he moved up north because he got a job and I guess he quit and he's got a girlfriend or something. All right. Well, Kenneth, yeah. you need to not have kids. <laughs> Why not? Man, do you need to not have? Yeah, they kids. told you that in jail. I remember that. Yeah. Remember? You're the kid. Do not have kids. You gotta work. You gotta work full time taking care of you. You need to get a nice job. Stay away from the corpses and take care of that little brother of yours. Don't let him get in trouble. All right. Yeah. All right, well, buddy. He takes care of him by scaring the s out of him with human heads. All guys that have snakes are dicks. <laughs> that's uh, one of my, that's my, that's today's thought. That's the name of your your book. Show me a guy. Show me a guy with a snake, a parrot, or a ferret, and I'll show you a guy I can't hang out with. You see those guys walking down the Venice boardwalk? They got big the uh, got the big macaw on one shoulder trying to get chicks. Oh, yeah. Guys with pets, especially the guys with pets you wear, you put on your shoulder. Any any pet that you wrap around your neck or that you perch on your shoulder, you set on your forearm or head, dick. Can't hang with that guy. Something wrong with him. Drew, do you know anyone that has this? I don't hang with anybody with that. Nobody should... Here's the deal. Your pet should leave the house on a goddamn leash. You go crap it and bring it home. Stupid. The guys put the snakes around their neck. Go hit the boardwalk. Dicks. Cody? Yeah. You're 18? Yeah. What's up? Well, uh, my girlfriend's been causing me some grief a bit. Mm -hmm. Uh, She really, you know, she's giving me oral sex, and she wants to uh, try sticking her finger in my butt and uh, try and stimulate my prostate gland and... uh, I just, I'm not really uh, feeling it. I was kind of wondering what some of the repercussions are. Repercussions of putting the finger in the butt or yeah, not I putting mean, the finger in the she's butt? Got, she's got nails and stuff, so, you know, I was wondering look, if... Look, you don't like it. It doesn't feel good. What, what in the hell's the matter with her? No, it doesn't feel good. Know. He doesn't know it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good. I mean, she's read way too many women's magazines. Just go in your in her house and tear them all out and burn them. I don't know. She was. I think this was brought on by uh, that damn American Pie movie. Yeah, look, this is ridiculous. No, he doesn't care. It's bogus. Here's the thing, though. Certain things you you know you don't like. Like I know I don't like brain. I don't want to eat brain. I'm like Kenneth over here. Yeah. I don't want to eat brain. And if people can go, how do you know? You haven't tried it. I'm like, I know. I just know. I know I don't want that. And the same with the finger in the ass. Yeah, but you haven't... Now, what if you do like it? Now you're screwed, right? No, you won't like it. It's not like there's some magic thing there that's going to be... I'm not going to like it, but what if I fall in love with it and every time I beat off, i got to stuff my right no, hand up my ass? You, you won't. You won't. You don't know me, Drew. Yeah, I do. Adam? Hey, guys. Let me say this. If I did like... My finger up my ass when I was beating off? It'd be there. Future generations of Corolla would have a third arm to work the remote. <laughs> or I would invent some sort of foot pedal remote. Or, or po- tongue operated. <laughs> no. You know, like the uh, drummer from Def Leppard? Yeah. He lost an arm. Yeah. So he had to rework his drum kit so he could use both feet. I would do that. It would be that version of me beating off in front of the VCR. Go ahead, Adam. Um, I have a chewing tobacco problem. Mm-hmm. And I've tried to stop, and it's just not working. How old are you? 
14. 14. How long have you been smoke, uh, chewing tobacco? Uh, since, like, the beginning of my freshman year. So. I'm a freshman right now. So, <laughs> so that'd be eight months? <laughs> that'd be this yeah. year? Eight months. Can't really do the math there. Since the beginning of my... my <laughs> that's like saying... Uh, I've been having this problem since my first year with the company. Mm -hmm. How long have you been? Uh, this is it. This <laughs> is my first, first year. It's this year. Well, I want to know. Answer. First off, Adam, you're the only guy named Adam who chews tobacco. There's no <laughs> other guy named Adam well, who chews. Any Adams exposed to chewing tobacco would be hooked. They they might, but no no guys named Adam are ever. <laughs> would you shut up, Drew, and stop crapping on my point? Guys named Adam don't chew tobacco. That's what I'm saying. All right. Name me an Adam that chews tobacco. Well, I'm talking to one. Other than, okay. All right. That's true. Uh, Adam, um, the deal is it's profoundly addictive. It's more addictive than cigarettes. You can get higher doses going. You know, all that stimulant effect you get from it is very yeah. difficult to stop. It is awful for your dentition, awful for your gums. It causes cancers of the tongue, esophagus. You will get cancer with this one. It's a bad one. What is, uh, what kind do you chew? Uh, Copenhagen. Oh, yeah. Get a big head rush from that too. Yeah. Well, get, what yeah. about the part where you're just spitting all day long too? Doesn't that does, it, does that dehydrate you at a certain point? Like how much saliva? Isn't it weird producing tons of saliva? Yeah, yeah I drink a lot of water. All right. Yeah, it's bad for your dentition. All is, right, Adam, do you Adam, have a dentition, or is this your dentition? Is your mouth your dentition? Yeah, I have a dentition. True. Do you have a dentition? You're your dent. Your dentition is your work. Your teeth. Your teeth, right? Yeah. yeah. Sounds oh, like yeah. a job. Hey, Adam, try, maybe get some nicotine gum. That's the way to get uh, off. Yeah, I, haven't I haven't tried that yet. All right, try the gum, because that, that's sort of the same behavior. And, hey, uh, here's the deal, Adam. At 14, you can stop doing heroin. It's true. A it's few, true. few years, few more years, though. And you can't stop. No. It's, it, it's, it's like, it's like, at it, it 14, you could roll your ankle horribly, yeah. have a full heel. It will mend completely. A week yes. later, you'll be fine. It's very interesting. You do it at 45, you oh, walk for... with a limp for the rest of your life. It's so true. And in fact, with the heroin, it's very interesting that opiates, you know, which is a horrible withdrawal from for adults, under the age of 17, it's it's, it's amazingly mild. Kids can walk away from a heroin habit two days, boom, no problem. It, is it's... it? Is it? Is it sort of analogous to your body? I mean, is everything just more pliable and we don't flexible? Know. I, I guess. We really don't know, to tell you the truth. And the, the problem is that because it is so easy for them to stop, they get this sort of delusion that, well, I can control it. You know, I can stop by one. It's no big deal to stop. And, uh, of course, they go right back. Right. So it's, uh, yeah, very dangerous. And and that, that party ends, what, about 18? 18. All yeah. right. Catherine? Yeah? You're 23? Yes. What's up? Okay, well, um, I've been with my boyfriend for about two years now, and I've lived with him for about three months, and the last month he's just just decided to, you know, he'll go out all night, and then he'll call me at two in the morning drunk and ask for a ride, and then I won't see him for two days, and then he'll I'll see him, and then when I do see him, you know, he'll say, I won't say much because I won't ask him what he's done or where he's been or what he's doing, and, but I'll, I'm upset, but not upset enough to really get pissed or say, yeah. you know, go go off on him. But then he'll, you know, continually ask me, are you mad or why are you mad? And the fact that he even asks me why I'm upset is, is what pisses me off. All right, relax. All right. Right. This, this is not just, a relationship. You're anymore. just angry at him anyway. Well, this is codependency. He, so what's up? He, he's, he's an alcoholic. He's on me or no, I'm you're codependent. He's an alcoholic and he's getting going here. What? No, I don't think it's that because... <laughs> Because you know what that is in relation to your dad, right? No, because my dad's not an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's uh, what's this guy do for a living, this boyfriend? He's a baker. He's a baker? Yeah. Hmm. I figured uh, candlestick maker or perhaps uh, <laughs> butcher. Butcher. No. <laughs> no. Butcher's a weird one to baker. toss in there. I mean, it's kind of, it's a little gory. You know, yeah, it's like, hey, we got the baker, and we got the candlestick maker, and then we got the butcher. Well, I mean, really, yeah. I just, I mean... Really, the candlestick maker's the weird one, because he's not the food guy. That is true. Drew makes a valid point. You got, <laughs> all, the, you got all the makings of a nice Philly cheesesteak there so with the, the baker. The farmer, the butcher, and the yeah. baker. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I think well, he's in there because it rhymes with uh, baker, yeah. Go ahead, Catherine. From from a guy's perspective, I mean, I'm just curious. I mean, am, am I being illogical by being upset by the fact no that no you're being foolish and codependent for not speaking your mind and allowing yourself to have real feelings in relation to this guy's 
behavior, which is non-reciprocal and non, in any, not in any way taking you into consideration. He's using alcohol in relation to these substances, and this is alcoholism taking off. It's what it is. Too, uh, you can choose to believe it or not. A, a pigeon farts, and you say that's alcohol well, that's taking what this off. Is. That's what this is. Hey, Catherine. Yes. Um, why are you putting up with this? You've been with the guy for two years. Where's that's, this relationship that's, that's going? Quiet down, Drew. That's All right. Are you living with him? Have you ever lived with him? Yes. Well, well, we've been living together for about three months now, and it's well. I mean, I'm I'm really in love with him, and we have a really yeah. good relationship. I mean, we do, but All it's right. only been the last month really that you know he'll go out and then. You know, I don't know, and and it's. I mean, well, what do you mean? I you mean, you mean oh, quiet down. Drew like... smells it. Just driving Drew nuts. But I gotta ask a few more questions. Okay, go. But he he alcohol. leaves for the evening and doesn't tell you where he's going. Well, the, well, no, because I will leave for work in the morning, and then, well, you know, we'll say bye, and then I will come home, and he won't be here, and then I'll go out, and then I come home, and he still won't be here, and then maybe there's an, a message from him, and. I don't know if... You he, said he goes out for two days at a time. Well, like, you know, like this morning. T t today's a perfect example. This morning I, I left, or no, excuse me, yesterday morning. I left for work. I, I went went to work, came home. He wasn't here. So I went out, went with some friends, and then I came home. Got home at like 9. He, I never t talked to him, never saw him. And then today after work, it was like 3, I guess. Um, There was a message when I got home from him saying, yeah. oh, hi, you know, I'm... Right. I'm doing this, doing whatever, whatever, but... You know. He doesn't have a cell phone? No. And he never calls you on your cell phone, or you I don't, don't have, have one either? Phone. Okay. Look, this, uh, Drew wants to know who's an alcoholic in your family. It's driving him crazy. Well, I don't really think that anyone's an alcoholic now, but I do think that there is possibly alcoholism somewhere in the lines. You know, it's just my guess, but I'm not really positive. Well, and I'm not, you know. What is, but your mom or your dad, somebody was using sub pharmaceuticals or alcohol or something? If anything, I mean, my mom may have had some issues in, you know, right. back in the day or whatever. Right. But when your brain was forming its implicit function. What, what so. was your mom into? What was she into? Oh, I don't know. She's a wild woman. So what was into she Into booze or what? No, not really. She just is kind of a free spirit. She does her own thing. She's, and she's free spirit, does her own thing. That doesn't mean anything, yeah, that's guys. BS, yeah. I just wanted to get some dick. Is she <laughs> smoking pot all the time or... Um, yeah, she does. All right. So there you go, marijuana. Act. So, All right. So, look, here's the deal. I also, just one quick question with her. Yeah. Catherine, this, is he on any medication, your boyfriend? No. Doesn't, he doesn't have back pain, take Vicodin, anything like that? No, no. All right. So All right. Be, keep your, keep your uh, wits about I just break up with the guy. Yeah, but she's not going to. All right, then who cares? You know what I'm saying out there? Adam and Dr. Drew will be right back on Loveline. Love Line is brought to you by Trojan, America's most trusted condom for over 80 years. Own two weeks' notice starring Sandra Bullock and Hugh Grant now on DVD and video. When opposites attract... You're the most selfish human being on the planet. That's just silly. Have you met everyone on the planet? Sometimes the one you can't live with... I'm his chief counsel, not his babysitter. ...is too much fun to live without. I think about you in the shower. Really? Not in a good way. Go behind the scenes on the DVD with hilarious bloopers and actor and director commentary. All righty. Sandra Bullock and Hugh Grant are a perfect match. Rick Leonard Maltin, hot ticket. Woo! Own two weeks' notice now on DVD and video. Rated PG-13 for some sex-related humor. Oh, I like playing footsie. I never noticed what large feet you have. Oh. <laughs> have big plans for the evening? Um, well, Magnum XL Extra Large Condoms from Trojan. 30% larger than regular condoms. The biggest Trojan ever. So they're not for everyone. That's okay. Have you seen his feet? My job is done here. Yes, I saw his feet. Magnum XL Extra Large from Trojan. The most trusted for a most comfortable feel. Hey, Larry, how about a ride through the neighborhood? I admire you, Vince, working as a crash test dummy all week, and still you want to drive after hours. Yeah, you gonna buckle up, my carefree companion? Why, we're not going far. I was hoping you'd say that. Up ahead, the birdbath of Dan and Sherry Hagee. Solid concrete, early 80s. The Hagees take great pride in their... Vince, look out! Picture window. Notice the fine antiques, like the 1922 billiards table. Currently under our wheels, and the custom-designed balls flying through our windshield. <laughs> Next stop, the backyard of the two oldest trees in the county. They're awfully close together. 
Sir, please keep your arms and legs inside the car. I will. Help me pick them up. We hope you enjoyed your trip. Boy, when you drive through the neighborhood, you really drive through the neighborhood. Just wanted to show you, buddy. No drive is too short to buckle up for. Point well taken. You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle up, even on short trips. A message from the Department of Transportation and the Ad Council. Beep, 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 yeah. Hey, so you think you can drive properly after you've had a few drinks, huh? I don't think so. This is John LaRoquette for RAD saying, come on, plan ahead. Pick the safe alternative. Give up the keys and choose a designated driver. The life you save may be mine. Happy holidays. Beep, 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 yeah. Drive it home. Did you hear what Smokey said? Did you hear what Smokey said? I want to know if you heard what Smokey said. Smokey said only you. This is Marty Stewart from my pal Smokey Bear reminding you if you must burn debris or trash, do it safely. Check local laws on burning and never burn on dry when you date. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. Smokey didn't mention nobody else. Smokey said only you. This message from the USDA Forest Service and your state forester and advertising council. Hi, I'm Malik Yobin. I play a cop on TV. When I was in high school, I got shot at point-blank range by another kid. My life almost ended. Each day, 10 kids are shot dead. Call 1-800-WE-PREVENT for information on what you can do to help. Not one more lost life. Not one more grieving family. Not one more. Getting shot changed my life. Don't wait for something to happen to you to take action. Get involved now. Not everyone gets a second chance. A message from the U.S. Department of Justice, the Crime Prevention Coalition, and the Ad Council. Hey, what's up? This is Darius from Hootie and the Blowfish for Rad, recording artists against drunk driving. When you go out and party and you get drunk, then drive, you're not only loaded, you're a loaded weapon. When you celebrate, designate. Choose a designated driver every night. Remember, music lives, and so should you. Love line, man. This is that you? Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Drew's wearing a hernia truss. Yes, I am. How does that work, Drew? Do you want to see it? Yeah, I got, I got mixed feelings about <laughs> seeing it. I really do. What uh, I'm not, What am I going to see? I'll see a part of it. Drew's dropping his pants right now, everybody. Yeah. Hey, Drew? Yeah. Dropping trow. <laughs> Look at that thing. She goes back, turn. It's what got, is that? It's got to hold your inguinal canal right there. What is that? Is that hard? Is that a hard pack yeah, that's there? That's a pad. Hard pad? It's the same thing. Like and Drew's button. It's horrible. <laughs> is that a thong and, back? And look at all the damn... Uh, what goes on in the back? Go, oh, it's like a diaper <laughs> yeah. and stuff. Oh, you got to pull it in the truck. <laughs> it <Jesus>. is <laughs> grand. Oh, true. And awful. beautiful. What happens when you got to go number two? Pull this thing off. Really? Just... That's a lot. That's like an iron diaper. Yeah. That's a chastity belt for a gay man. Yeah, it doesn't cover that part, though. You know, what? So doesn't cover your anus? No, it's, just, it's like a belt. Oh, so I could still get you? Yeah. I, I mean, I mean, it's completely covered back there. I wonder if the gays have the chastity belt. Or maybe it's a chastity Remember, plug. Remember, most or... of them have oral sex together. They don't have anal sex. Remember that? Yeah. I know that freaks you out. A little bit, yeah. yeah. Hey, you know what I'd like uh, out of you uh, people that are calling the show? <clears throat> I'd like to put a personal plea out for some uh, threesome calls or some uh, big jug calls. I like the big boobs. I've not seen the big boobs on this show in quite some time. Initially, what attracted me to this show was the big can calls. <laughs> and ironically, the big can calls have been, they've gone the way of the dodo, Drew. Yeah, they, you arrived, they run the other way. I know. That? You scared them off. I scared off the big boobs. Yeah. I you're, like you're, those big areolas, too. I'd like uh, <laughs> some calls about that. Big boobs, big areolas, or threesomes. These are the topics I'd like to uh, talk to uh, America about. Andrew? Yeah. How big are your areolas? Mine are not that big. Oh, well, we're moving on then. Girlfriend won't give him BJs. It makes him go down on her. Wait a minute, this is an outrage. Andrew? Yeah. Your girlfriend won't give you BJs, yet makes you go down on her. 
Well, yeah, kind of. She's she's only given once in her one in her life. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, I'm I'm just asking for a little bit of the of the of the oral sex, and she's just not not she's she just grosses her out and that kind of thing, and just yeah. won't get in won't get into that. But uh, I went down Thanks on her for... once, and now every time we work together, she's just like, "Hey, can I have some of that again?" And I'm like, "Well, yeah, I guess, but where's my?" Okay. Uh, and and, and what I really want to know is how do I get her to how how can I get some how do I get her to be more interested in that because mm-hmm. she's just way grossed out by it. Mm-hmm. You ever uh, you ever think about guys, Andrew? No. You're straight. I am straight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ever had an, an encounter with a man? No. One time. Adam, you ever had an encounter with a man? No. Yeah. <laughs> ever what? That's true. Ask again. Adam, you ever no. Had- <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry. I don't know. Uh, never, uh, never touched another man's Pepe. No. 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 Or... no. no. Okay. Are you sure you're not by? Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, we have no answer. I'm mad at uh, Andrew for doing those weird. No. It, it, yeah. it, what it what it ends up doing is it makes you pursue a line of yeah. questioning yeah. that you it, shouldn't it, it, pursue. It, it seems elusive. Like, mm, no. Yeah. Okay, so here's the deal with Andrew. He's going down on her. She's well, not going down on yeah, him. Yeah, what you call a non-reciprocal relationship. It's like not caring. It's like she he's he goes down on her and goes, well, if, you know, if you want me to go down on her, you have to do some of this on me. Eh, that's ridiculous. That's not a relationship. Ah, break up. Yeah. I, that's I know, not working. It, it, that's really it just not sounds like a BJ, but it's not. It stands for so much more. Reciprocity. That's right. Stands for reciprocity. Willingness. Willingness. Caring. Caring. Jamie. Jamie. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, you're 27. Yeah. Did they say I sound like a girl, do I? Yeah. They say you sound like a girl. <laughs> Who says yeah. that? Are you a girl? No. They're jealous. That's what I said. They're, they're, they're jealous of the uh, rich... Uh, tones. Soprano yeah. tones that are alto tones. Castrati tones. <laughs> Castrati's tones that go out. Yeah. What does it go? How does it go? Bass, alto, what the, soprano. Wait, wait, what is it? What is it? Oh, you know, there's, there's, I'm thinking of a saxophone. There's a caloratura soprano. There's a. All right, smart guy. What's the bottom? Bass. Yeah, bass. Then what? They're male. Alto? Well, men, it's, it's in, in terms of solo singers, bass, baritone. And there's a dramatic baritone, a lyric baritone, and then alto. tenor. And tenor. Alto is, is a, a saxophone? Theme. Yeah. Okay. Jamie. Yeah. So uh, what happened to your voice? I don't know. It just never changed, I guess. Never changed from uh, when you uh, played the role of Beanie Boy <laughs> in Cecil and Beanie? Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Uncle Captain, say that. <clears throat> All right. What do you do for a living? I'm, a, I'm an operator. You're an operator? Yeah. Of what? For a transportation company. Okay. Okay. And what's the question? All right. I want to know if you get a lap dance, would you get something from the stripper? I just want you to, I want you to do me a favor here. Ah. Uh. All right. I'm going to... Help me see if will help? No. <laughs> you say, uh, say, it's all right. All right, no, I'll say it's all right. You ready? Well, what do I say? Just repeat after Adam. All right, go. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> all right, good enough. <laughs> all right, baby. I mean, uh, fella, fellas. Uh, Jamie, uh, y- you know, I suppose if there's contact, no, you're skin not going to get anything Not through your clothing. Not, not through clothing. What oh, were you no. wearing? What were you wearing? No, I was wearing clothes, but I kind of got like. Um, what happened? I kind of panicked because it was my first time at a strip club, and uh-huh. I thought I was going to get something or something. Like no, that. you're fine. Just, yeah, just keep your hands. Don't touch anything. How much did it cost for a lap dance? Forty bucks. Forty. Yeah. It's expensive. It's usually twenty. He's in Orange County. Oh, I need to ask you something, Adam. Yeah. Why did they change the host at the man show? Because I was at the man show. When you had the girl with the penis, remember? Uh, hmm. Oh, uh, you went to. When did you go to the man show? When you got. When you had the girl with the penis. I don't remember the girl with the penis. It, no. 
How long ago? With, uh, well, that was a while back. Have the All new right. hosts begun airing? I have or no. Or producing even? Being produced? I have no idea. Yeah. Jamie's an operator? Yeah. He's manning the phones uh, somewhere? Uh, I don't know. Knocking over Lincoln Logs and talking that crazy falsetto voice? Sounds like Lou Christie. True, do you know Lou Christie? No idea. Who's Lou Christie? <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> Lou Christie was a singer from the 60s that sung all those. He, he would go into this crazy falsetto voice. He'd sing Lightning Striking Again and uh, Two Faces of Eye, and he'd go into this crazy... Hey, Drew, nothing? You know Lightning Striking Again. Maybe. Oh, yes, I, you I, do. I'm probably, but... Yeah, we'll find it during yeah. the break. What happened to you, Drew? What happened? I don't, I don't what have... What went on? I was not connected to society, I guess. I was living outside. Mm -hmm. All right. We now decided we don't want you. <laughs> that you've been outside of us for so long that we would like you to now remove yourself back from society. I'd like you to move back home to your folks' place. Forget about everything you know. All right. All right, we'll, we'll get Dr. Bruce in here starting tomorrow. Here's what I've decided, by the way, about uh, <clears throat> a lot of guys come up to me, they want to know what to wear to a strip club. Hmm? You, you don't want to wear leather chaps and jeans. You don't want to dress like you're... Uh, Riding a, a bull. You, jeans you wear though, right? Mm. You don't wear uh, tent pants or. or no, whatever. you you want to wear something where you can get some serious friction going. Oh. Here's what I'm saying. Here's the rule. What if I, you're? What if the guy's one of the ones that'll? No. Here's what I figured out. Here's the rule. Here's how you decide what to wear to your what, what to wear to a strip club. Yeah. Look in your closet. Find the pair of pants you would least like to be wearing if you got in a moped accident. <laughs> Those are the pants you want to wear to the strip club. Wow. And conversely, the so pants... So you, you want to get as close to penis contact as possible? Yes. Yes. When did that all start happening? As that clubs? started. But, uh, well, uh, that's, that's kind of a new thing, isn't it's it? It's a newer, newer thing. Well, the, the, the stakes have been raised. Wow. With everything. Jen? Hey there. You're 18? I am. What's up? Well, I had a question about threesomes. Mm -hmm. I, I recently yeah. had one with my boyfriend and my best friend. You had one with your boyfriend and your best friend. Right, right, real mm -hmm. genius. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, so best friend female. Yeah, I went down on her and everything, and. Um, what was your so, now? How old is she? She's eighteen. What's she look like? Uh, she's a little taller than me. Well, I'm five foot, and uh, I have big boobs. I had a reduction, but they're still pretty big. <laughs> Ooh, what were yeah. you? Oh, this this could. I was a 36 double D and now I'm a 34 C. Mm-hmm. When did you get the reduction? Um, June of 2001. You got the 16. 16. That's 16 unusual. 16 reduction. Why? Why 16 reduction? They, they were just like in proportion to my body. I'm like so tiny. All right, that's it. it. Weird. <laughs> yeah. I know yeah. you'd like them though. Adam. Yeah, Adam, really? Adam hit paper here. <laughs> so let me get this straight. Uh. Five foot and very petite. Right. Which, uh, huge knockers. At but least 36 it's... 36 doesn't sound that petite, it, It's 16. Right? Yeah. Yeah, 36, 36 means you got kind of a big back, doesn't it? No, it was the brand of bra I wore. It's really hard to find bras that fit. Mm-hmm. And it just happened to be the size that fit. How, how was the shape? The shape was good? It was okay. Mm -hmm. you know, they're, like, mm -hmm. they're perfect now, I'd like to say. Mm -hmm. Um, but mm -hmm. they used to be like, I don't know, I didn't... They were a little saggy, a little. Yeah, well, how's the scarring right. situation now? Actually, it turned out really well. I had a fantastic doctor. Do you have an in so inverted... My scars are so tiny. Inverted T? Uh, I had, yeah, and I also had... He went all the way along the bottom. Yeah, yeah. all right. Yeah. Come on, Drew. That's enough now. So now we, let's get back to the threesome. Yeah, so um, <laughs> basically now my best friend's a little weird around me. I feel well, like she thinks I'm big lesbian or something. What was your boyfriend able to do with the best friend? Oh, he didn't have sex with either of us, and he didn't give her any head. He just sort of, they were kissing, and she sort of, you know, handled him in a way, you know. Was he able to get a BJ? Oh, yeah, for me. Only for me. Though. Okay. Well, usually they don't stick to the rules. Yeah, no, I mean, he yeah. was very good about it. All right. Well, that's smart. Smart. Yeah, it was. He wants, uh, wants to uh, F another day. <laughs> live, <Yeah>. live. <laughs> live to F another day. <laughs> yeah, you who us, he's what? BJ's he's and 34. runs away. He's 34. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> How old is your friend? She's 18. Oh, jeez. Oh, I want to kiss him and kill him. <laughs> Son of a bitch.
<laughs> He's 34. Yeah. Uh, and and you re- is it really uh, is it really your boyfriend? Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much. What does he do? Something with cell phones or pagers? He's a tattoo artist. Tattoo artist. He's a tattoo artist. artist uh, yeah. That's oh, uh, boy. Uh, <laughs> all right, this guy's an idiot, right? No, no, he's actually very, very smart. Yeah, he went serious. to culinary school at one point. Oh, jackass. <laughs> all these chef guys are jackasses. But they get tons of punte. <laughs> I don't know what it is. What? You girls oh, like guys who hang out in the kitchen all the This is a track. What is so attractive about the chef guys to the girls? What? Isn't this a pussy job? I mean, I, every 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 other celebrity, every hot celebrity chick we have in here is going out with some chef somewhere. Oh, he works over at Spargo or something. Who cares? What is that? <laughs> all right. All right, so, so Jen, what? What's that? He cooks dinner for me. All right. That's nice. uh, <laughs> All right, so so your friend's weird because you had this weird sexual encounter with her. Exactly, and, you know, she didn't go down on me. I went down on her, and okay. now she sort of, you know, treats me like I'm into her, and she feels weird around me, and I don't know how to just, you know, explain to her that it was only for the moment. Wait, see, she's into you, is that what you said? No, she yeah. acts She acts like uh, she's into her. I Jen's see. into her. Here's the thing. Mm. It just just relax. Yeah, let it settle down. It just, it's just like a snow globe. It just settles. Yeah. You don't have to confront. You don't have to get into it. All right, Drew. That's good. Big mm. boob and uh, threesome calls. After All in the, one. After this. 1-800-LOVE-191. Hey, this is Dan from Tonic for RAD, Recording Artists Against Drunk Driving, reminding you that drunk drivers are still the number one killer of young adults in this country. Please use your head and save your life and those on the road. Always choose a designated driver. Remember, music lives. You should too. You can never go home again. You can never go home Hey, what's up? This is Darius from Hooting the Blowfish for Rad, recording artists against drunk driving. When you go out and party and you get drunk, then drive, you're not only loaded, you're a loaded weapon. When you celebrate, designate. Choose a designated driver every night. Remember, music lives, and so should you. Bob Sheehan from Blues Traveler for Rad, recording artists against drunk driving. I like to party just as much as the next guy, maybe even more. But the one thing I won't do after I've had a few is get in the car and drive. Don't blow it. Always choose a designated driver. Remember, music lives and so should you. I wish that I knew what I know now. When I was young. Hello, this is Rod Stewart for Rad recording artists against drunk driving. When you go out and party, get drunk, then drive, you're not only loaded, you're a loaded weapon. When you celebrate, designate. Choose a designated driver. Remember, music lives, and so should you. I wish that I knew what I know now. Hi, I'm Serenity, and these are my friends, Missy and Stephanie. You know, a lot of things happen to us every day that we have no control over. But HIV and other sexually transmitted diseases aren't things that just happen to you. You do have a choice. You can choose to use a condom, have safe sex, and take control of your life. Asking for a condom isn't stupid. It's smart. It shows that you care about yourself and your partner. You can do something about sexually transmitted diseases. Use a condom. Every partner. Every time. We We do. do. A message brought to you by Wicked Pictures and AIDS Project Los Angeles. Hey, what's up? This is Darius from Hooting the Blowfish for Rad, recording artists against drunk driving. When you go out and party and you get drunk, then drive, you're not only loaded, you're a loaded weapon. When you celebrate, designate. Choose a designated driver every night. Remember, music lives, and so should you.
Hi, this is Joe Elliott from Def Leppard for Rad, recording artists against drunk driving. Planning on going out and having a party? Great, have a lot of fun. But do me a big favor and don't blow it. Always choose a designated driver. Remember, music lives. You should too. Do you know whether it's a girl or a boy? You're pregnant and you're looking forward to that baby. You'd like to have a drink just to relax, but you don't want to do anything that might hurt your baby. Any other time, it would be just an innocent drink. But while you're pregnant, the best choice for you and your baby is to stop drinking and call your doctor for advice. While you're pregnant, don't drink. Don't risk your baby's future. A public service message from the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Forget about that phone number. Kelly, who is going to be in here uh, tomorrow night? She's from uh, X Men 2. <laughs> which is uh, made worldwide like $150 million over mm -hmm. the first weekend. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Wolverine's doing his thing. You got. Uh, Jada, what's her name or no? What's her name? The most beautiful woman in the world. Uh, it's that black chick who won the Halle Oscar Barry. there. Halle Berry, yeah. Whew, she's really opened doors for uh, people of color. She's really pioneered that woman. Great woman. <gasps> yeah. Nicole? Yeah. Oh, she's such a pompous piece of work. Every time she gets interviewed, it's like, oh, kids come up to me and they tell me I can be a doctor now. I can be a nurse. It's okay. It's like, uh, hey, uh, yo, Hallie, uh, first off, people of color have been uh, on TV a hell of a lot longer before. They, you think he just started this whole thing? Like, really? really? Michael Jackson wasn't selling records and uh, Sidney Poitier wasn't winning Oscars uh, 25 years ago? Like, really, young young people of color come up to you and say, I think I can be a, you know, a doctor now? My medical school class was 30% minorities. Yeah. That's Plus she's a, more white than black. That's Asian. Yeah, I know. She's such a nut job. I wish I wish society would just uh, give her an Elka Bong with one of those goddamn Oscars. <laughs> what a pain in the ass. <laughs> Go ahead, Nicole. Um, I was just wondering if Ugh. semen had calories. No. No? No. None? Mm, effectively none. Oh, look. No, look it's about the no, same no, as when you go... <laughs> nothing has... It, is there is there anything that has zero Drew that doesn't that that's got substance to it? I mean, uh, Diet Coke, but I mean anything that's mucus is gonna have well, one or two. Yeah, yeah look, nothing. A, a chiclet's gonna have more. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So, uh, although uh, if you're planning on swallowing, chug something, away. I'd, no, I'd say uh, four thousand calories per teaspoon. Oh my. Chug away, baby. Okay, thank you. Good no, times. Be good careful. times. Jesus Christ. Be careful. Be careful. <laughs> be careful. Condoms. 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 Antonio? Yeah. You're 18? Yeah. What's up? Well, um, I have a question because um, when I get an erection mm -hmm. and my girlfriend starts playing around with me, mm -hmm. um, I'm not circumcised, and when she pulls my skin down, it hurts, like, so much, and I don't know what's up with that. Mm -hmm. In other words, does the skin feel like it's stretching as she pulls it down? Well, it doesn't, I don't know about, I don't really know about that much. I mean, it doesn't go all the way up. It stays, like... Do you, um, ma do you masturbate? No, not really. I mean, I have my Ooh. girlfriend. I live with her. I don't really need to masturbate. Have you seen your penis? Yeah, of course. Okay, you've seen it. Okay, <laughs> gosh. I wonder where we're at here with your penis. We would guess, because you're uh, uncircumcised, that the end is kind of closed up a little, and when she stretches it over the head of your yeah. erect penis, it hurts. It stretches it. Stretches it. So you may, either you, either you kind of work it out yourself. Or you, need to, you need to work it out yourself. Or circumcision. No, nah, he's not going to do that. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Circumcision, maybe that would help. That would help. Well, it would help, but so would cutting it off altogether. <laughs> yeah, listen, Antonio, work it out yourself. You know, work it in. All right. You got to move it. There's a lot of stuff, actually, uh, in life, Drew, that you're supposed to do that with. Mm -hmm. The parts and stuff. If you, you know, it's it's sort of like, uh, yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying to, it's like, it's like therapy. 
You, you know what I mean? Like yeah. physical therapy. Yeah, yeah, You do yeah. little parts. You got to like move that. little stuff. Yeah, joints and muscles are that way, I guess. Right? You, you got to do this. You got the uh, you got the foreskin on there. Mm -hmm. Jennifer? Yeah. What's up? You're 23? Yeah. What's going on? Four kids. Yeah. You got four kids? Yes, I do. Wow. Oh, my God. Any twins? No. All single birth. Wow. Oof. I, well, I started really young. That's the, that's the thing. So it wasn't, I'm not too proud of it, but. Yeah. All right. It didn't hold you back. Huh? No. It, you, well, you learned your lesson after uh, <laughs> child three. That's the important part. <laughs> well, no, we're still planning on having more. Yeah. Why? Huh? What? How many more? At least one or two. What? Six kids. How does that work? I don't, it's. I, I, I think it's abuse. No, I don't. I was not abused when I was small. No, I don't mean. I don't mean it's. A, I don't mean you were abused, and I don't mean it's like <laughs> physical abuse. I say, it, when you start cranking, when you start getting into the six kid range, it's a subtle form of abuse for the kids. It's like there's two parents. How could you possibly tend to love and nurture and take care of all six, especially at that age? Oh, I do. We're doing pretty good right now. We do a lot of family things, and I. All right. Well, well you at four. I can. All, I'm almost four, but, there, but six, but eight. Uh, what's uh, what's uh, the husband do for a living? Um, he's an electrician right now, and he's right now. To school. Yeah, he's going to school to be an, um, an electrical engineer. All right. All right. Well, good times. What's up? Um, I just wanted to know. Well, right now, I just um, I have a six-month-old baby, yeah. and I wanted to know because I possibly want to get a breast reduction done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're talking. What are you coming in at, Mama? <laughs> a double D. Mm-hmm. How big's the rest of you? Um, my, my size is probably 34, 29, 32. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we got to keep moving, Drew. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's good, right? It's a good uh, combo. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Well, you want to get a breast reduction... But then you want to know about breastfeeding? Yeah, I wanted to know if that was still possible afterwards. I believe so. They usually, the nipple gets sort of isolated uh -huh. and then moved up. Yeah. But wouldn't so. that mess with the, the like the mammary glands? No, they just the they they breast? leave that all attached. Why do you want the breast reduction? Because it's getting like a lot of strain on my back right now. Mm-hmm. So, because um, with my job, I do a lot of sitting and standing. And how? What have the pregnancies done to you that way? Anything? Hold on a second. Sitting and standing. This is a job that is. Oh my god. What? What kind of job is this? A lot of sitting and standing. Mm. And can can you do a lot of sitting and standing? I think you can only do a lot of sitting or standing. Right. You can't do a lot of two different things, can you? Well, that leaves out lying. I I know, but There's nothing lying and sitting and standing. All right, yeah. <laughs> Jennifer, how can you do a lot of sitting and standing? Uh, okay, well, I don't do a lot of sitting. I do a lot of standing. A lot of standing. Right What's so, your job? I'm, I'm a health information tech. I see. So. All right. Who uh, what who takes care of all four of these kids? We have rotate. Well, I work a third shift position, and my fiance works the first shift position. Fiance? Huh? Say well, we're gonna we're getting married. Sure. You wait till you get to a uh, baker's dozen before you oh, tie the knot. At least, for, at least it's in the plan. Is it his kids? All these? Yes. They're all four his kids, and you guys are, are white, and you haven't gotten no, married. We're not white. What are you? We're Native American. You're what? Native American? Yes. Ah, it's starting to come together. <laughs> all right. What's that supposed to mean? Na na he. Na na Yeah yeah na 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 cha <laughs> I turned Japanese at the end. All well, right. I say there's a connection there, you know. Yeah. Lost you. All right, there. Hey, uh, yeah, breast reduction. Well, you got to talk to the plastic surgeon. Yeah. But also, you know, you're going to have two more kids. There can be some, what are called like, involutional or atrophic changes as you go along here with all these pregnancies. Mm -hmm. So you may want to finish the pregnancies out before you do the plastics. Okay. All right, so, and your husband's uh, Native American as well? Yes. I do this joke. It's the only one. I, it's the only, <laughs> only good one I know. But when the guy comes, uh, when he comes through the door, yeah. you know, when he comes home from work, you go, "Hi, hey, how are you? <laughs> hey, how are you? Yeah." There's, there was one. It's a good one. Well, there's one. It's good. Listen. Yeah. There was one American Indian stand-up. I can't remember what the guy's name was. It was like 20 years old. That was the only joke I knew he did. But here's the deal: if you're Yakov Smirnoff or the Indian American, uh, Native American stand-up. What's your competition? You really got to be funny. Yeah. 
You really? You, you think Yakov's a funny guy? In America? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Let's take a quick break. Yeah. We'll be back. Bye. Okay, so I know there's nothing wrong with me. So what's up? Well, I was like you, and I used to think that these Datelines were totally cheesy. Why can't I meet anybody? But I tried everything else and thought, what the hell? So I called the Dateline and actually met a cool guy. I called the Dateline and I hooked up with some cool people. Believe it or not, other normal people are out there looking too. 877-889-DATE. 1-800-LOVE-191. How about a ride through the neighborhood? I admire you, Vince, working as a crash test dummy all week, and still you want to drive after hours. Yeah, you gonna buckle up, my carefree companion? Why, we're not going far. I was hoping you'd say that. Up ahead, the birdbath of Dan and Sherry Hagee. Solid concrete, early 80s. The Hagees take great pride in their... Vince, look out! Picture window. Notice the fine antiques, like the 1922 billiards table. Probably under our wheels and the custom-designed balls flying through our windshield. Next stop, the backyard and the two oldest trees in the county. They're awfully close together. Sir, please keep your arms and legs inside the car. I will. Help me pick them up. We hope you enjoyed your trip. Boy, when you drive through the neighborhood, you really drive through the neighborhood. Just wanted to show you, buddy. No drive is too short to buckle up for. Point well taken. You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle up, even on short trips. A message from the Department of Transportation and the Ad Council. Beep, 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 yeah. Hey, so you think you can drive properly after you've had a few drinks, huh? I don't think so. This is John Laroquette for RAD saying, come on, plan ahead. Pick the safe alternative. Give up the keys and choose a designated driver. The life you save may be mine. Happy holidays. Beep, 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 yeah. Drive it home. Did you hear what Smokey said? Did you hear what Smokey said? I want to know if you heard what Smokey said. Smokey said only you. This is Marty Stewart from my pal Smokey Bear reminding you if you must burn debris or trash, do it safely. Check local laws on burning and never burn on dry when you date. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. Smokey didn't mention nobody else. Smokey said only you. This message from the USDA Forest Service and your state forester and advertising council. Hi, I'm Malik Yobin. I play a cop on TV. When I was in high school, I got shot at point-blank range by another kid. My life almost ended. Each day, 10 kids are shot dead. Call 1-800-WE-PREVENT for information on what you can do to help. Not one more lost life. Not one more grieving family. Not one more. Getting shot changed my life. Don't wait for something to happen to you to take action. Get involved now. Not everyone gets a second chance. A message from the U.S. Department of Justice, the Crime Prevention Coalition, and the Ad Council. Hey, what's up? This is Darius from Hootie and the Blowfish for Rad, recording artists against drunk driving. When you go out and party and you get drunk, then drive, you're not only loaded, you're a loaded weapon. When you celebrate, designate. Choose a designated driver every night. Remember, music lives, and so should you. What's up? This is Gwen from No Doubt. For recording artists against drunk driving. You know, we all live in Southern California and we all drive these freeways. Give up the keys, choose a designated driver. Music lives, so should you. Happy holidays. Jason died in a car accident on April 3rd, 95. I thought right away about donating his organs. He said to me, Mom, if anything ever happened to me, you should donate all my organs. Share your decision to become an organ and tissue donor with your family today. I feel very happy that he decided this. Organ and tissue donation. Share your life. Share your decision. Call 1-800-355-SHARE for a free brochure. A message from the Advertising Council and the Coalition on Donation. Did you know a healthy unborn fetus can actually hear things going on around him? Mostly they hear a pleasant sound that closely resembles the ocean. 
unfortunately some yet to be born babies will also hear these sounds these babies have a much greater risk of being born with serious birth defects stop drinking while you're pregnant it's the best choice for you and your baby a public service message from the national association of broadcasters and this station hey this is dan from tonic for rad recording artists against drunk driving reminding you that drunk drivers are still the number one killer of young adults in this country please use your head and save your life and those on the road always choose a designated driver remember music lives you should too you can never go the show all right we did it we got we got our head around this one i think that's right yeah we're rocking now kelly who coming in here tomorrow night kelly yeah who Woo. i was one, trying to cue anderson my own self yeah you're right you're yeah <laughs> don't don't try <laughs> haven't you learned from me uh, I normally i haven't but yeah, yeah. now i have yeah. so until next time <laughs> this is adam crawler for dr drew saying Mahalo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, bigger. Oh, yeah. I want Star Jones' ass big. Oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, get it. oh. I don't know if we can do that. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.